Good Chief. morning, Ka, Ka Willie, Kong Willie. Hey. Hi, Kir. Yeah. Abuhay ka. Ah, yeah. I, I, I cannot join you guys kasi may kasabay akong ano, parang seminar. Huh? Uh, handled by a co-op co uh, union na uh, eh, appellate kami doon. I represent the uh, transport co-op na ano. Ang sipag mo talaga mag-aral ah. Hindi, ano, uh, ano to, parang required ano eh. Licensing. Eh, di pa naman nag-start, kaya okay lang. <clears throat> May pinadala ako sa'yo kanina, ayaw ko kung nabuksan mo. Ya, yeah, nakita ko, nakita ko. Oo. Uh, eh, bubuksan eh, ko kami, nawa. May sabay lang, ano. Nalalo ko yung ginagawa mo eh. Parang nga uh, hindi yun ang ano eh. Yun ang, yun ang uh, talagang ano. Yun talagang uh, formula para malaman mo ang nararamdaman ng mahirap, mayaman. Yeah, Kailangan yeah. talaga. Kung, kung sasuluhin natin yung ipipilit natin yung atin, eh hindi yan yun. Para tayo mga Hitler na nun. Uh, uh, I could make a presentation some other time yung principles ng ano tapos yung siguro what we're doing binubu pa namin eh binubu pa <laughs> maganda yung ano yung uh, yung formula mo na pwedeng ano pwedeng iutang tapos self liquidating uh, uh, ano Hamiltonian principles oo uh, oh yung uh, uh, Hamiltonian credit principles kaya lang baka magdadala mga banko sa atin. Ah oo, talagang ano. Oh. Yan yan ang lungkot eh. Oo. Oh, oh. So ang ano diyan, uh, you do it. You don't announce it ano basta you implement it na lang. <laughs> Paya, pangga kumbaga guerrilla marketing o guerrilla ano hanggang it creates a critical mass. Oh. Parang leadership by example. Ha, <laughs> oh. Ano kasi pag nakita nila nga uh, marami nang gumagaya, mapipilitan mag-adjust yung maya. Oo, oh, ma-adjust. Pero oh. dictated din ng mga ano eh, na IMF, World Bank yung mga yan eh. Oo, oh, oo, oh, oo. Oh. Tama. The mga global banking, banking the global banking system kontrolado na buong mundo, all central banks sa ka-network yan. Hmm. <clears throat> iba ibang ano uh, even the federal reserve is privately run <laughs> that government owned uh, anyway mahabang diskusyon yan uh, becomes ano but is simplify natin para naintindihan lang ano, nakakarami oh. hindi yung ginawa nila kay, kay Marcos hindi ba nung mm, ginawag mm. yung ating mga utang Mm-hmm. Sumipa yung dollar. Grabe. Uh, 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 yeah. Interest rate. Eh. Uh, ano, wala, nang, wala nang nagtatayo na pabrika. Panay uh, sa banko na lang. Yung pautangan. Umabot ng 30%. Diba? Yeah. 30% yung pinaka ma- pinakataas nga nung job obis, 48% interest rate. It's a grabe. Imagine. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Pero ano, so that means in two years, double na yun. Almost 100% na yun. Grabe. Hindi, hindi ka naman oh, oh. oh, oh. Wala, wala talagang ano. Walang, so, walang, walang trabaho tao. Talagang grabing oh. ang world Nag-upisa economy. Nag-upisa nang di, dinilink yung ano nung in August 1971 by Nixon tinanggal sa gold ano ang dollar. So that means the dollar you cannot print any volume of dollars kasi nung araw, you can only do that katumbas ng corresponding ano assets of gold. E nung dinilink sa gold and dollar, ay you can print any ano, ay lahat international ano currency ang dollar. Eh, paper print money na sila nila. print. Oh, paper money na lang wala na ano. So, ay nako. Kaya tapos sinunda ng sinunda nung 1999 yung ano yung repeal ng Glass-Steagall Act. Okay, what's the Glass-Steagall Act? The Glass-Steagall Act 
nung time ni Roosevelt, hiniwalay niya yung investment banking at sa commercial banking. Nung dineregulate yan, pati yung mga pension plans na naka ano sa banko, tinitrade na ng mga Wall Street ano players. Oh, grabe. Oh, trade na yun. Ang dami. Lugi ka after that period na yun. O, oh, naging speculative. So, nag-boom-bust ang uh, situation ng ano. So, pag sinabing boom ang Wall Street doesn't mean okay economy. The financial can be growing but that physical economy may be collapsing. In fact, almost 99% of credit goes to speculative ano. To pay debts. Wow. nag na eh. And only about over 1% that goes to the real economy which builds factories, solid jobs, etc. Ganun na yan. Kasi lumala, in fact, nag 2008, it got worse kasi nag-bail out, nag quantitative easing, nag kung ano-anong support, all just to to chase, kumbaga, throwing gasoline to douse the fire. <laughs> Parang ganyan eh. Lumala lalo. So, a new bubble is coming up. Talaga? Eh, mahabang kwento yan. Oh. A new bubble. Oh. Building up. Hindi, kawawa Kaya, tayo. Oh, Paano yung dollar niyan? Abot ng 60 pesos. Dollar. Uh, at saka prices. Inflation. Ngayon, anyway, magandang i-ano yan. Magandang discuss na ano. Ano implication sa sa atin? Parang ganyan. Uh, ang ang bank ang mga bangko whether may crisis or hindi they, they make money <laughs> for every dollar uh, in capital they lend 10 times hindi naman hmm. magdi-default yung 90% noon eh. Eh takay magde-default kasi sila na may ari ng mga ano. Oo, oh, oo. Oh, mga nakasalasa oh. kanila. Oo, oh, oo. Oh. Yeah, tama kasi may katumbas na in, in asset ka, yan or In fact, ang video sila na nagmamanage ng mga ibang uh, mga sinanda ng mga malalaking uh, oh. ano, ng da, Dami na foreclose mga property. Hmm. Yung mga hindi na pagbayad ganyan. <clears throat> Do you know that the the banks, commercial banks are worse than the loan sharks. Okay. I believe that. Ito, ha? Oh. Uh, ito, ha? Simple. Uh, 80% ng depositors are below, ano, uh, are depositors na with minimum balance below 2,000. Kasi 2,000, okay. karamihan dyan, eh, ganyan. Ganyan lang level. Ilan lang yung mga million-million nasa banko, ganyan. Ngayon, meron tinatawag na if you're below the minimum uh, balance, it's less than 2,000, babawasan nila ng 250, 300, 350. And the highest among banks is 350 pesos. Okay. So, the first month na below minimum ka ng 2,000, babawasan 350 yan. So, 350 divided by 2,000, that's about 17.0% plus plus plus, no? For that month, eh, annualize ang kwenta ng interest rate. So, 17 okay. times 12 months <coughs> uh, no, per ano, God. that's about 210% thereabouts, no? For the first month pa lang. On the second month, babawasan na naman, kasi hindi mo na maintain yung balance, eh. babawasan na naman another 350. I-divide mo doon sa remaining balance na 1,650 <coughs> na yan. Di ba? You get a hmm. pra, a, a, a an amount, uh, ilang percent na yan, times 12 ulit. Palaki lang palaki until it reaches hundreds of hundreds, 600 percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eh, sundan mo yung computation na yan, and you'll be surprised. Eh, 80 percent ng depositors, ganyan. That's why I'm claiming the banks are worse than loan charts. Ang, yeah, ang 5-6, 80 percent lang yun eh. Dubai. Doon na tayo uh, sa Bombay. Uh, walang application uh, form pa. <laughs> uh, tapos, ito po. Okay. Ang TEF, hindi na nakawa ka, hindi mo alam, di ba? Ang qualified, qualified TEF, ang nagnakaw sa yung katiwala mo. Ang robbery, persang kinuha sa'yo. In this case, 
katiwala mo, persang kinuha sa'yo. So, anong tawag doon? Are the banks uh, bank robbery or qualified theft all at the same time? <laughs> anyway, food for thought lang yan. Food for thought. The greatest uh, scammer. Grabe. Ay, naku. Kaya, <coughs> kaya ngayon, bawat withdraw mo, may bawas na 18 piso. Pag nag-check ng balance mo, may bawas din. So, kaya akin, hindi ako nag-bankwa. Nakuha ko lang, alimba, dumating pensyon ko, kuha ko lahat. Kasi kung mag-withdraw ka, bawasan niya eh. Isang kuwaan lang akin na ginagawa. Ay, ibang case siya ta sa pension. Parang ano. Pero yung typical depositors lang, mga wage workers, sa mga ano, bumababa talaga sa minang. Bawat ah, may, may bawas. Binawasan oh. ng 18 pesos. Oh. Kaya Sabi, ginagawa no? ko, isang withdrawal lang. Kuha na. Kuha Tama. ko na lahat. Tapos sabi ko sa mga anak ko, wag na kayo magbangko. Mag- <coughs> Tapos mag- yung 3-year clearance, 3-day three three clearance, di ba? Mm. Eh, sa GCash nga, real-time. Nakaka-send, receive ka ng pera mo. Real-time. Ito, pag nagpadala ka ng, ano, sa banko, kung na-check, eh, clear pa na 3 days. Oh, may clearance. Eh, pwede naman, <laughs> pwede naman text, o pwede, ano, okay na yun. I mean, di ba, may pera yan, may bank account. I mean, with the sophistication ng technology. Mm. Pero, siyempre, gagamitin nila yan. 3-day, ano. <laughs> Yung overnight loan calling rate. Oh. Anyway, wala, wala I, I have to go. Okay, I have to okay. go. I have to go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I just keep this on kasi nandun ako sa laptop for the yung seminar ko. Okay. Kinig lang ako din just in case I can pop in para ano lang. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But I have to go kasi nag-start na doon sa kabila. Thank okay, you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Ang papa ko is strict to talaga yan. Ayan, Sir Ben, napag-upas, napag-usapan yung bangko. Uh, hmm. Kung magbalik tayo sa 89.9, sa dating 1899 uh, sitwasyon, ito pa rin yung pera gagamitin natin na perang control ng mga kabal, control ng bankers at ng ano, or gagawa tayo ng sarili nating pera or sarili nating monetary para we have our control? Kung ako, kung ako ang uh, masunod na uh, because we are sovereign state, let us maintain the sovereignty, our sovereignty. Not that we have to copy from uh, somewhere. Ngunit, so, pera pa. ngunit, ang sabi nila, hindi tayo mabuhay kung, kung uh, tayo lang. Eh ano ang silbi na sinasabi na the Philippines is the richest country in the world? Kung ganyan ang katwiran. Ha? Ay, ang problema natin, ang problema natin sa Pilipinas, yung uh, greed of power, greed of wealth, greed of... Uh, tapos siraan. Walang pakialam sa kapwa. Yan ang problema natin. At ano, gahaman. <laughs> gahaman. Ito lang ha, sa akin ha. Dahil uh, ito, uh, karaniwan na problema sa mga siman. Ang siman, malalaki ang sahod. Ako, naka, nakalanas ako na monthly ko, eh, kalating milyon as a chief engineer. So, ang iba, parang nainggit na doon. Alam mo kung bakit? Sabi niya, po, tari, ilang buwan ko ka trabaho ang isang buwan mo So sa madaling salita, parang uh, nagkaingitan. So, anong ginawa nila ngayon? Hala, patraining na patraining ng mga seaman. So ang kinita mo sa barko, tama lang, bayad mo naman sa training fee mo. May training na 60,000 na uh, per uh, course. Kaya pinaabulis ko yon Pero, pero sa ngayon, naabulis na. Pero uh, violation yun sa international uh, convention kasi may kasabihan doon sa international uh, treaties na kung ano ang naratipika ng bansa, dapat ay eh, in good faith, sundin. Pero hindi nasunod eh. Kung saan sila kumita ng true corruption, ay gagawa sila ng uh, memo circular. O, ito naman mga siman, takot naman makipaglaban dahil baka hindi daw makasakay. 
Sige, bayad lang, nabayad. Kaya kung maganito ang sistema natin, wala mangyari. Kaya dapat uh, mapalitan itong sistema na yung uh, atin-atin, hindi yung uh, sa kapwa natin, atin pa. Yan. Kung mayaman talaga, okay lang. Ay, ang problema eh, kung sino pa ang pinakamahirap, yun pa ang uh, pinag-iisipan nila na lokohin. <laughs> Tuloy yun, ang paboritong lokohin yung mahihirap. Oo. Yung may kasalanan po dyan, ano, yung mga may kaya. Kahit na sa halalan, ayaw turuan yung mga mahihirap. <laughs> pa, uh, ayaw nilang uh, ipakita. Kasi yung mga may kaya, sila lang pwedeng mag-research sa mga kwalifikasyon ng mga kandidato. Eh. Mm. Yung aking binibenta ng uh, voters education, eh, pumapalakpak ito mga kaskwela ko. Wala namang gustong magturo. Kasi kung ang mahirap, matatalino yan eh. Kung bibigyan mo ng tamang informasyon, mas matalino sa matalino yan eh. <laughs> Dahil sila, ang mahirap, natitikpan nila yung hirap eh. Mm. eh Di ba? Yung, yung lolo nila, mahirap. Tatay nila, <laughs> mahirap. Sila, mahirap. Mm, so tama. alam nila kung ano talaga ang problema, kung bakit sila mahirap. Kaya lang, dahil uh, nasanay na sila sa kahirapan, masaya na sila sa kahirapan, you know? Which is wrong eh. Kasi sa edukasyon, pag hindi nakapag-aral lang mahirap, wala nang pag-asa talaga. Mm. Yun, ang, uh, yun ang obligasyon natin mga nakakaintindi. At uh, medyo, medyo, ano, medyo, ika nga, mas uh, baga ng buhay. Ano? Kaya lang, il il ilan yung, ano, ilan yung nag-iisip talaga ng mga kung paano pag-agaanin eh. Kamuha yung mga kandidato, isipin nyo, sa darating na halalan, ang national uh, candidate, no? presidente, vice-presidente, 70 yan eh. Ayon na pong uh, senador, limang presidente, limang uh, vice president. E di ilan na yun? Uh, 70. Pitong pong kandidato, uh, 85% ng botante, they belong to the CDE. Ito yung malagahanap buhay. Ang iba, walang makain. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Paano nila pag-aaralan yung kwalifikasyon ng pitumpong kandidato? Sabihin nyo nga sa akin. Wala. Paano nila pag-aaralan? Ang, ang aking parang shortcut dyan, yung mga matitino na non-partisan, pag-aaralan yung mga kwalifikasyon. No? Makukuha mo naman sa Wikipedia yan, makukuha mo yan sa, makukuha mo yan sa, ano, sa Google, sa Diario, no? <coughs> so, tayo ang gagawa nung ano, nung record nung uh, pitumpo. No, tapos i-check natin na totoo, no, hindi na walang paninira. I-fact check mo kung tama ba ito, totoo ba ito. Mm. And then dahil yung uh, 85% ang mahirap, walang oras na na pag-aralan yung mga kandidato, gagawa tayo ng parang mock election. Pipili tayo ng uh, mula sa A, B, C, D, E na botante para sa kanila ipapasa yung mga na-research natin. Tapos, magbobotohan sila. No? May, may grading system. Uh, para bang uh, yung, yung pasado, 3. Yung medyo, 2. Yung baksak, 1. O de, may grading system. May scorecard ng bawat isang uh, delegado. No? So, so, yung mga ano, yung yung uh, produkto ng mock election na yun, uh, yun ang uh, konsyensya ng mga mm. nagmamahal sa mahihirap at represented naman sila doon sa mock election. Kailangan mas maraming uh, delegado mula sa Class E. Dahil yun ang pinakamahirap eh. Hindi pwedeng kasing dami ng Class oh. A. Uh, so yung demographic yan, kailangan fair. Kukunin natin ang percentage ng A, B, C, D, E. Ayo, kandari. kandari Good morning. Good morning. So, so okay. yung, yung, yung resulta nung halalan, nung back election, ilalabas natin yun. Pero hindi natin sasabihin sa kanila, o yung number one, yun ang iboboto nyo. Yung top 12 sa senador, yun ang iboboto nyo. Pabayaan nyo silang gumawa ng kanilang diskarte 
Pero alam na nila na ito yung ranking. Kasi bigyan natin ng laya na makapag-isip. Kaya lang, turuan natin lahat tayo. Paano mag-isip? Hindi natin pwedeng parang binubuli natin. Ano? O ito, ito gusto namin. Ito bote nyo. Mali yun. So bahala na sila mag-usap-usap na magkakapit-bahay. Sabi nila, o, oh, ito lumabas dun sa Mac Alexa ng mga, mga kagalang-galang, ng mga retard, leader ng mga magsasaka, ng mga hihirap, kurbang-kurba. Anong palagay nyo? Eh, bahala na sila doon. Pero At least, yung... mas, mas magaling yung kaysa sa SWS o Palsaysia. Pero... Kasi may... pinag-aralan eh. Okay, nandito si Engineer Verhidio pwede continue sa Verhidio do sa problema niyo sa kuryente. Oh yes, good morning. Yes. Uh, okay. Pwede kong ikwento na ngayon? Sige. Okay, sige, But sige, sige. Siguro alam nyo na po na dito sa Albay, may dalawa pong malalaking geothermal power plants. North of Legazpi, Tuwi, and Southeast of Legazpi, Manito, and Bacon, Sorsogon. Ang total output po nito ay conservatively estimated. 247 megawatts. Ang kailangan lang naman po ng buong albay sa ngayon na ay 90 megawatts. So may excess kami na pwedeng ibigay sa ibang lugar. Kaya lang po, ang problema, ang probinsya ng albay ay isa sa may pinakamalalang problema sa kuryente. Sa ngayon po, kung irarank mo yung lahat ng electric cooperative sa Pilipinas, 121 of them all ang albay po kasama dun sa bottom four, pinakamababang apat na electric cooperatives na may problema. Kasama po namin dun yung Lasureco sa Mindanao ito. Ah. Uh, Tawi-Tawi, Sulu at uh, yan, kaming apat, Tawi-Tawi, Sulu, Lanao del Sur, albay. Mauunawaan natin kung bakit may problema dun sa Tawi-Tawi at Sulu because well known na depressed areas ang mga ito. Sa Lanao del Sur, ang dahilan daw ng mga tao doon, bigay ng Diyos yung hydroelectric power plant doon, kaya hindi sila dapat magbayad ng kuryente. Kami sa Albay, bigay din ng Diyos ang geothermal power plant na dalawa. Pero hindi namin sinasabi na hindi kami magbabayad. Pero sana man lamang, bigyan kami ng uh, parang benefits out of this God-given resources. Ang nangyayari po, buo. Inalis sa amin lahat ng benepisyo na galing sa dalawang planta na to at ito po ay pag-aari na ng Aboytis family, yung Tiwi, at ng Lopez family, yung sa Bakon Maan ito. Ngayon, ang albay ay nagdaranas ng brownout, 9 hours, uh, 12 hours. Minsan naman, panandalian, babalik, uh, mawawala yung kuryente, babalik, tapos masisira yung mga gamit namin. Tapos po, nitong June, nagreklamo po, alos lahat ng konsumidor. Dumoble yung kanilang binayaran compared sa May. Pinangakuan sila. Sabi, ang ginagamit kong pronoun ay sila kasi ako, nakasolar. Na bababa daw ngayong July to 8 pesos per kilowatt hour mula 13 noong June. Nung dumating po yung bill sa kanila, 12 pesos per kilowatt hour yung presyo. Samantala yung pangako, 8. So, ang binaba, konting-konti. Uh, uh, parang tawag namin, sinsilyo. Ngayon, ang APEC ay may problema din. Ang sabi nila, nalulugi sila. Kaya lang, hindi ako maniwala. Paano ka malulugi eh? Captured mo yung market. Dati, ang utang po ng Aleco, Albay Electric Cooperative, 4 billion, 2013. Kaya pinapasok nila itong San Miguel. Ni Ramonang. Pero po ngayon, after 7 years, hindi po nabawasan yung utang. Nadagdagan ng 3.3 billion, 7.3 billion na ngayon ang problema ng mga albayano. Hindi po natupad yung nasa concession agreement. Ito pa po ang masama. Batay po dun sa kontrata, kung may kita itong APEC Albay Power and Energy Corporation ng San Miguel, hatiin 50% sa Aleco, Combined sa utang, 50% ibubulsa ng San Miguel para dun sa mga stockholders nila. Ngayon, ibig sabihin yan, dalawa ang dapat pagsumikapan ng mga albayano. Yung pambayad sa utang 
at yung ibibigay na kita ng San Miguel. Kaya yung 4 billion na yon dapat kumita ang APEC ng 8. Para yung 4 billion, ibayad sa pinagkakautangan, yung 4 billion, ibibigay sa San Miguel. E 7.3 na ngayon. So may get 14 billion na ang kailangang pasanin ng mga albayano para ibayad sa utang at para ibigay sa San Miguel na kita nila. Ganun po ang kalbaryo ng mga albayano ngayon. Ayaw pang lumayas. May petition po kami dito. Sana po lumayas kayo. Ang nakapirma na po, uh, 3,459 as of last night. Pero sabi ng APEC, hindi kami lalayas kasi lab namin ang mga albayano. Kami po na insulto. <laughs> insultong, insultong grabe sa amin. Uh, so ano po ang maari namin gawin dito? Pag linaban po namin sa korte, patatagalin nila. Baka tapos na yung 25 years na period ng kontrata, hindi pa tapos yung korte. O yung kaso sa korte. Ah, papabuti na yan sa, sa Supreme Court. So ang laban po namin ngayon, political. Kami po ay nag-encourage sa mga albayana ng lumitaw para kumandidato at kalabanin yung mga politiko na naging padrino ng San Miguel para makapasok dito. So ganun po ang naisip naming strategy, signature campaign, Uh, political uh, battle at meron pa po, po kami. Ayaw kong gamitin ang salitang boycott. Ang ginagamit ko ay freedom to choose other products than those of San Miguel. So yun po ang aming kinakampanya dito. Uh, Pag- uh, Prada, uh, ang dito sa Manila, ang pinaglalaban namin na i-implement ng gobyerno ang artikulo 12 na ang ibig ko sabihin, uh, sa panahon ng kagipitan, dapat take over ng gobyerno ang mga public utilities, kaya ng kurente, tubig, telcos, uh, mga tollways. Dapat take over ng gobyerno yan. Okay. So, dahil yan nga, sabi ko na nag-post kami, pati KDP, malaban din yan, na sovereignty reside in the people. Ito ang mga nakaupo sa gobyerno natin, na sa atin ang kapangyarihan. Kung magsolido lang tayo na magkaisa tayo, wala sila magawa dyan. Ang problema okay. naman natin, watak-watak. Mm. ba? Diba? Okay. Gaya sa kurente. Nag-propose kami na huwag bayaran ng kurente, ganun din ang tubig. Ay ang problema sa mga subdivision, nagabayad sila dahil ayaw nila matanggalan ng kurente, tubig. So ang mga mahihirap, lalo nahihirapan, napipilitan sila kasi kinapotolan sila pag hindi sila nagbayad. Opo. Sir? Actually, doon sa petition namin, number one doon sa solution na ino-offer namin, i-take over ng provincial government ang aming distribution utility. Ginawa po nila yan sa Pantau Port. Provincial government ang nag-operate and manage ng Pantau Port, doon po sa Libon Albay. Ginawa din po yan sa Olongapo City. So, meron po tayong legal president kung gagawin yan ng Albay Provincial Government. Dapat lang, dapat. Mayroon pa po sa August 5, no? Meron po, meron. Ako ang complainant doon sa ERC, virtual uh, hearing. Okay. Kasi po, Adana, mga buong barangay, pinuputulan nila. Ah, Kahit yes. yung kaya, dinadamay. Pumayag ka sa virtual hearing pala. Well, ah. uh, yun lang po ang ano doon. namin, paraan. Doon sa Pangasinan, doon sa Pangasinan, may kakilala ako doon na nakipaglaban din. Sabi sa kanya, may virtual hearing. Pero sabi ko, may hearing ka naman sa Senado. Sa Senado na lang kayo mag-usap para mag-alaman. Kasi sa virtual, baka sabi niya, kasi po merma ka naman eh, lumayag ka naman eh. Pero ko doon sa Senado, at may mga senador na naka bantay at uh, magandang uh, ebidensya yon kung ano ang sasabihin nila. Kahapon po, uh, ano, two days ago, participant ako sa Senate Committee hearing on um, ano, pa, uh, Senate Committee on Public Services. Hindi hmm. ko nakita yung chance na magkaroon ng magandang resulta doon. Although ang topic po ay kaso record tree, gusto yung takeover ng isa na namang private uh, company. Ah, uh, tinuo akong resource uh, person pero hindi naman ako ni-recognize. Ang nagsalita lang na nagsalita doon matapos yung Kasureko 3, yung Bicol Light and Power, 
saka ARC, mga senador na at saka si Congressman El Rebilla Perte. Di naman ako ni-recognize, kaya mahina po ang aking paniniwala sa mga Senate uh, committee hearings. Yan po ang aking ano doon. Sabi ko hindi public hearing yun, nag-feedback ako. Ano yun, hindi naman heard yung public. Doon sa Pangasinan, si Merira ang lumalaban doon. Pero tumatawag sa akin na padala. Kina, nung mag-usap kami ni Panilo doon sa, pang, pang, sa Pangasinan, sabi niya sa akin, i-email mo sa akin, eh, bigay ko kay Pangulong Duterte. Hanggang ngayon, hindi niya ako nasagot. Ang, ang email ko sa kanya, hindi niya nasagot. Okay. Uh, doon po sa mass disconnection. Um, so, tinatamad yung APEC na mag-disconnect ng mga individual Uh, non-paying consumers. So ang ginawa nila, parang yung Senatchi, summary, uh, buong barangay, pinutulan, tatlo, Bacolod, Tabaco City, Baryo, and uh, Hunop, uh, Malinaw, Albay. Nagsumbong yung mga tao sa DOE. Sabi ng DOE, APEC, ibalik mo yung connection sa mga nagbabayad. Alam niyo po ang sagot ng APEC? Sabi ng APEC, hindi. Mas malakas sa gobyerno itong APEC. Bakit? Ang dahilan nila, it is our commercial prerogative. So, yung gobyerno natin, walang lakas para banggain ng San Miguel Corporation. Yan lang, Ganyan yan po lang. ang kalagayan ng uh, at least ang probinsya ng Albay dito. Talo ang gobyerno okay. ng isang pribadong korporasyon. Yan! Yan! Yan. Okay, Professor Butch Valdez, you may now speak. Salamat. Po. Wait lang po. Okay. Professor Butch. Okay, Kabots, you are recognized. Kabots, napag-usapan ng kurente dito sa Albay. May madagdag ka doon. Ah, engineer. Naka oh. nag-usap, nakapag-usap ba kayo ni RJ Habiliana tungkol diyan? Hindi ko po siya kilala. Hindi pa po hindi kami nag-meet. Sa katipunan nag ng Demokratikong Pilipino, siya rin ang presidente ng uh, Warm sa Tubig, Water for All Movement at mm. saka sa uh, Consumer UFCC. United ah, Sige po, thank you for informing me. Uh, subukan kong makakonect po sa kanya. Oo, kasi ikot na ikot kami dyan. nag kami dyan sa ERC, sa Miralco, pero parang hindi pa rin kami napansin. Ilang, ilang taon na, magdadalawang taon na, na na kulit sa kanila, pero parang wala sila narinig. Kaya dapat, <laughs> na, sa, akin, na, sa akin na paning, pananaw, dapat, ang Pangulo dyan ay talagang matibay at sundin ang Konstitusyon. Ngunit kung hindi man lang masunod itong 1897 Konstitusyon, kaya ito ang pinaglalaban natin na dapat ibalik na lang natin sa 1899. Kasi ang 1987 Konstitusyon, ginabiolate na nila na samantala napakalinaw. Pero hindi nila ginapakiala, hindi nila nasunod. Opo. Well, may dagdag ko lang po, ano, noong 2016, yung kampanya dito si Pangulong Duterte, In fact, I was only two meters away from him. Kuinento namin ang problema. Ang sagot niya ay uh, hindi naman siya nabing lulutasin, parang nagbiro siya noon, pasabugin niyo na yung geothermal plant niya. Biro niya lang yun. Alam namin. But then, nakuha namin yung sense yung kanyang statement na gagawa siya ng paraan. Ngayon, nung nakaupo na siya, nag-donate si Ramon Ang ng 1 billion pesos sa anti-drug war campaign ni Pangulo, well, sa tingin namin, nakalumutan na yung mm. issue dito. Yan, well, wala namang... I voted for the president. I campaigned fiercely for the president. Nakipaglaban ako sa Facebook para sa kanya. Marami akong nakaaway. Pero, honestly, hindi naman masama ang ko. Frankly, I will say na doon sa punto ng pagbabalik ng aleko sa kamay ng mga albayano, parang na-disappoint kami. Yun po yung katotohanan niya. Yeah, Hindi naman kami aasa dito kay Lenny Robredo. Kahit sa Bicolana, taga Camarines Sur, kapitbahay namin. Kasi nung tinanong ko yung 
close contact niya doon na kabarkada ko nung college, tinanong ko, will Lenny stand against privatization of electric cooperatives? Ang sagot na sa akin, pabor si Lenny Robredo sa pag-privatize ng electric cooperatives. Sorry, bikula na ako, bikula na siya, I will not support her. <laughs> Rangkahan na ito. Okay. <laughs> Hindi naman ito personal na laban natin. Ito ang pinaglalaban natin ay ang ating mga kababayan. Kaya kung uh, sakali matuloy itong uh, 2022, nasa taong bayan yan kung uh, ano ang kanilang desisyon. Dahil uh, sa ngayon may balita kami na nasa second reading na ang uh, mandatory vaccination. So... Mm -hmm. uh, ang uh, pag uh, 100% ownership ng mga foreigner sa tubig kurinte parang uh, pinapayagan din nila so nasa taong bayan yan kung iboto nila yung mga tao na nag uh, nagtatumatayo uh -huh. dyan ang problema lang natin ito na mga, mga bumuboto hindi naman nila alam kung ano sino-sino sino yan ang mga tao na yan na uh, kumakalaban sa taong bayan kaya ulit-ulit lang na the wrong from the start in between to the end will always be wrong. Apo, marami tayong dapat pagtrabahuhan, malaki ang problema, matwiling kami na makipaglaban na pangmatagalan. For how, as long or how long it takes, we'll give it all our best. Okay, so... Tigil muna natin itong uh, tungkol sa kurente at uh, 9 o'clock na. So now let's go to the uh, 1899 uh, Constitution. We're still trying to purge it kasi we realized last week that some of the ways that we're uh, Carlo, si Senator Lina na pumasok na. Uh, Mel, paki-unmute mo, paki -ano mo si Senator Lina. Senator Lida, good morning. Good morning. The steps you already pitched the steps. Ah, Nana, to to move forward with this. Um, we're just waiting for Sir Nelson for the confirmation. Um, I sorry, not Nelson. Si Sir Si Mark for the opt out. But okay, yes, sir. Okay, so. Senator Lina, good morning. I'm just, okay, I'm just so, fixing my computer. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. So, si, I'm sorry, uh, Professor Hill uh, Ramos uh, was not here, but uh, he told me that <coughs> he might be coming in at 10 o'clock upon his arrival in Los Angeles. So, sa mga nakikinig na nandito ngayon, uh, Professor Boots, can you say something? Good morning, Senator Lina. Willie Villarama po. Uy, Ay, inaayos ko lang yung aking computer. Sandali lang. Okay, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry, I uh, I asked that I, I I be allowed to join by nine, so I'm here at nine. Okay, so as instructed by Professor Boots, uh, then you will be delivering uh, uh, your speech about uh, uh, something which is not nice to be heard, but uh, well, let's accept that it's should be heard and we have to correct the very mistake we had so now uh, uh senator lina you have the floor now okay uh thank you very much um my uh, my countrymen there is uh, one thing that bind us uh, together in this uh, event, 
and that is uh, we love our country. We want changes to happen in our country. We want to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. For everyone to be given an opportunity to uh, develop his or her uh, potentials as human uh, beings. We love our country and we want to see that uh, the family of nations give due respect to our country and our people. We have been dreaming about this for a long, long time. That was the dream that uh, our forefathers also entertained since uh, 1898 when uh, we won the fight against the colonizing country, Spain. Although the Americans took away that uh, independence that uh, we deserve. The Japanese came, took over temporarily. And then uh, World War II ended with so many Filipinos losing their lives fighting alongside the Allies. In 1946, the Commonwealth period was ended. Theoretically, we were in control at the time of our own destiny. But uh, neo-colonialism has its own uh, way of showing up and uh, our elite uh, failed to sustain the momentum of uh, nationhood and independence. We are in this period of our history when the uh, situation is not getting any better. While uh, we have a government that is in place with the three branches of uh, government, executive, legislative, and judiciary, and the local governments in the local level, the dream that uh, our forefathers have uh, uh, embraced until now are still dreams. The poverty level is still very high in our country. The government uh, is still moving as if it is still in an experimental stage. And there is so much to be done to make those dreams come true. The uh, way that we decided to go in uh, building our country and in the installation and management of government is the uh, system of democracy, where theoretically the people uh, make the decision sovereignty resides in them and all government authority emanates from them. That in essence is democracy, an ideal concept. Unfortunately, democracy in our country is still very much a work in progress. 
as it has many, <clears throat> many imperfections. Why? Because uh, there is really no way by which people can make their own decisions independent of uh, influences by those who have uh, a better share of the wealth of the country. When a number of people <clears throat> is ignorant and uh, are busy trying to survive economically, where ignorance uh, stalks the land, when political dynasties reign supreme, there cannot be any genuine uh, democracy. Decision is not made by the people, but decision is made by those who wield the economic and uh, the political power combined. The newest <clears throat> wealth uh, developers are the politicians who have made uh, government a business enterprise combined with the old rich and the, old, and the uh, emerging tycoons. They hold sway and they decide what happens to our country rather than the people deciding for the country. So how do we go about making democracy work? My countrymen, We need revolutionaries. We need uh, Filipinos who will uh, be willing to lay down their lives if necessary. We need uh, Filipinos who will share their time, talent, and treasure to the cause of democracy and to the cause of good governance, prosperity for all in a sustained manner. These Filipinos I am referring to will take up the cudgels of leadership for the rest of the country. They may come from all sectors of society they may come even from the landed gentry. They may come even from uh, the business sector. They may come from the ranks of the fishermen and the farmers and the laborers. I do not believe in class distinction. Everyone can rise above his own class. Mm. Mm -hmm. My countrymen, <laughs> we, we, need, we need a critical number of Filipinos who will assume that leadership role. We are 110 million Filipinos. If we can only get 1%, of Filipinos who know the vision for our country, clear on the mission, clear on a program of government which will address the problems of the country, then that's the only time we can hope that we can turn this country around. These Filipinos that I am referring to, unfortunately, are difficult to find. In my personal life, As I belong to the 70s, 
working with the young people who dropped out of school or were delayed from uh, their graduation because they had to go organizing their fellow youth or be immersed with the urban poor, the workers, the farmers, and the fishermen. That was the time in my life when I did not care about anything except the welfare of our country and our people. We have to go all out again and help motivate the young people of today that they have to rise to the occasion and meet the challenges of their generation. My generation helped bring about the return of democracy, even only in its form. But in substance, while we had EDSA 1 and even EDSA 2, in substance, democracy is still a, a very much work in progress. Leadership is the key. It's the, it's the quality of leadership in our country that will make the difference. If leadership is good, to put it simplistically, then the country will be good, period. The quality of leadership that this country can produce will be the key that will open the door for good governance, prosperity for all, in a sustainable manner. It's the leadership that will uh, influence the rest of the people to install a government that can carry out the needed reforms. Concretely, the programs of government that will include rapid industrialization, agricultural modernization, climate change mitigation and adaptation, promotion of local autonomy, Pre high priority for education, health, science, and technology. Grassroots participation in all decision making. Protection of our national sovereignty. Making sure that uh, what is ours is protected like the resources that we have in our exclusive economic zone. A special protection program for the marginalized sectors of our society so that they can cope with the rest and be abreast in terms of development with the other members of society. In the end, when this leadership is present, then officials in government, national or local, will be the ones who are who will implement the needed programs in line with the vision and mission for our country. When I became governor of Laguna, armed with this strong desire 
to make a difference. I was able to organize down to the grassroots level. I made sure that the members of my uh, movement in Laguna underwent uh, um, a seminar and even refresher course. We were able to transform Laguna into a mix of industrial, industrialized and agricultural country. Was able to, the government of Laguna was able to reduce poverty, bringing down the poverty level from 48 to 18 percent in six year time. We were able to raise the needed revenue from local taxes and liberated ourselves from being dependent on our share in the national taxes. Laguna has the most number of uh, projects and value for money. Laguna was ahead compared to the rest of the country. We fought wetting in all fronts despite the threats to ourselves. I hope I thought that I could replicate what I did in Laguna when I became the ILG secretary. I wanted to share to my fellow governors and also to the mayors because I founded when I was governor of Laguna, the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines. Unfortunately, to my sad realization, the others were not in the same mold. They view politics differently from the way I viewed it, that politics is a way observing the people in a very meaningful way. But let me tell you that this idealism that I still nurture up to this time was the product of my uh, development as a young person when I was recruited to a, uh, to a movement where we were given the training and orientation to love our country above ourselves. And thankfully, with God's help, as I was also renewed in the religious way in 1989, I was able to sustain myself, even if there were ups and downs, highs and lows, in terms of my commitment. But generally, I have remained committed to see that our country will be a better place to live in, with leaders who will consider the country above their own interest. Let me go back and emphasize the role of leadership. From Batanes to Tawi-Tawi, can you imagine if we can form an organization that will lead a movement or change to call it in a simple way. An organization comprised of individuals, young and old, men and women, but with the youth being a substantial part of the organization. To drill down 
in a very systematic way and sustained way. This um, love of country, the values of love of country, and even love of God. These leaders who would not be corrupted. These leaders who would also be supported by the organization. These leaders who would uh, um, be trained in the art and science of politics and governance. Not just for today, but in the long haul, in a sustained manner. Even if there is conflict or difference of opinion in the leadership, there can be the nationalistas and the liberals in an ideal setting where the difference is only their approach to, the, to solving the problems of the country. Never mind. As long as the leadership in both is united in the deliverance of our country. If every barangay has its own organization of idealistic people, competent, incorruptible, committed, charismatic even, and these are the qualities of leadership. They must be committed to love God and country. They must be competent. They know what is government, the workings of government. And they have the political skill as well. This must be a combination that must be achieved. The political skill and the competence to be administrator. Then the other qualification is the charisma, the ability to communicate, the ability to influence. Then the, the other is the character of the leader. And lastly, commitment. I refer to this as the five C's of leadership that uh, each one in that organization that I'm talking about must possess and must be present in a sustained way. Not falling victim to temptations of leadership. So my fellow, my countrymen, and I would like to address you as my fellow revolutionaries. There is no way by which we can make democracy work in this country. There is no way by which we can deliver our country from the present problems that is now facing without that leadership being present. Who will uh, bring about that leadership? You and I can start it here. Some people have their own initiatives. So we just have to compare notes, coordinate with them to hasten the task of installing this kind of leadership in our country and consequently the government that will bring about the needed the realization of the vision and the mission to raise up as many servant leaders in our country to carry out the agenda for development which will bring about good governance prosperity for all in a sustainable manner. In this way, democracy will be meaningful 
although it will always be a work in progress as improvement at the top will always be there. There is no stopping. There is no dead end. We have to push the frontiers of development in our country. And that includes making sure democracy is achieved meaningfully and in a lasting way. I will be turning 70 this December. I started my public life when I was 17 as a young activist. Nung araw, sa dalampasigan ng Paranaque, malinis pa yung mga ilog, uh, mga dagat doon. Nagse-seminar kami roon. And uh, we were given time to do reflection. And I saw the birds flying in the air going towards a certain direction. Ang sabi ko sa sarili ko, mabuti pa yung ibon na yun. Alam ang katutunguhan, alam ang direksyon. Ako dapat ganun din. Alam ko ang direksyon ng aking buhay. So from then on, I said to myself, I can no longer entertain that uh, traditional childhood dream of just obtaining good education, learn a good job, marry a beautiful girl, putting up a nice house, being able to travel and having the good means of transportation. I turned my back against those, those dreams and I pursued a different path even to the extent of having been delayed in my schooling. Fortunately, with God's help, I was able to finish my law school, my law schooling. Another realization is that uh, one cannot achieve change in consciousness, change in consciousness if one does not go through a traumatic experience or an experience that will break you. And I was broken. I was broken. I veered away from the routinary pattern of existence. Another realization is that if change is to come, you have to be strong. You have to nurture yourself and be ready for the fight because the establishment will not give up its perks and privileges. But it cannot be a superman's fight. Each one who has seen the light must carry that light and share it with others. I was successful in some way, but not successful in many ways as I still feel a voice, that I still feel I am a voice okay. in the wilderness. But let's target one million people, or two million at the most, of committed, competent, 
man of character, charismatic. Then we can begin to hope that we can turn this country around. There is now political noise. Eight, nine months to go before the election. Again, we are focused on who will be the best candidate. We look for the personalities. Luma na yon. If we want change, yes, we will look for the persons. But we have to make sure that that person has clear solutions to the problems of the country. That's why I emphasize more on programs of government. Paano ba talaga maiaahon ang mga may hirap sa kahirapan? Paano bang edukasyon ay magiging mataas na kalidad na edukasyon ay magiging uh, madaling makamtan ng ating mga kabataan. Paano makakalikha ng kalidad na trabaho? Hindi na pag-uusapan yan. Kung mapag-usapan man, ay pabalat bunga or lip service lamang. Nasa dapit hapon na ako ng aking buhay. When one turns 70, and I'll turn 70 this December, binabalikan ko yung aking kabataan na ang pangarap makita ang bukang liwayway sa dakong silangan na magbabadya ng kaunlaran, katarungan, at pagka papantay-pantay ng mamamayan. Hindi ko nakita yung bukang liwayway nung katanghalian ng aking buhay, nandun na nga ako sa gobyerno. Ang panalangin ko, kahit na hindi na bukang liwayway, silahis na lamang makita ko ay Masaya na ako. Ngayon, magdadapit hapon na. Malapit na sa takip silim ng aking buhay. Wala ako nakitang bukang liwayway. Hindi ko nakita ang silahis. So ang panalangin ko ngayon, kahit banaag na lamang ng bukang liwayway, ay aking masilayan ay masaya na rin akong may himlay. May panahon pa. May panahon pa. At habang may buhay, may pag-asa. Kaya lamang, kinakailangan ng pagmamadali. At sa pagmamadaling yan, kailangan ang maraming kamay na magkakapit-bising. Mga kamay na mag-aalay ng sarili. Lakas, talino, kayamanan o buhay man para sa ating inang bayan. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. At kung kayo may mga katanungan, handa naman akong magbigay ng kasagutan. Mabuhay kayo, mga minamahal kong kababayan. Thank you, Senator Lina. And uh, for those who are present today, if you have some question or inquiry, then just raise your hand. Professor Botts? 
Any reaction? I think si John Carlo Iway raised his hand. Okay, John Carlo, you have the floor. Carlo, please unmute. Yes. Okay. Okay, na unmute na. Okay. Siguro ang dapat na connect natin sa dinadawa na yun sa sa session natin sa Shadow Congress at sa nang iyari na rin yun na nasisimula na rin ang World Freedom Rally ay dapat pagsama-sama tayo lahat dadapanan itong mga uh, undemocratic na aksyon na ito. At uh, gusto ko na yung paalam sa lahat no, na nagsimula na ang rally ng in-organize ng mga uh, organizers ng World Freedom Rally dito sa Manila kasama ang GM team at na-live na, na po ang KDP ngayon. So sa mga pagkatapos ito ay siguro punta natin sa samaan din natin. No? Yun lang okay. po muna. Carlo, so okay. Okay. Uh, Mamaya na yan at uh, reaction mo na sa nabanggit ni Senator Lena. Tama-tama lamang. Bakit nakakalimut? Uh, Professor Botts, any comment? Now you have the floor. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Magandang umaga kay Senator Lena. Uh, at uh, sino po ba marami? Yung mga kaibigan po tayo dito. Yeah, I was uh, at the, the privilege of uh, listening. Maka-turn on ko lang nung, nung aking uh, uh, Zoom. Um, napakinggan ko yung uh, uh, talumpati ni Mr. Joey Lina, Senator Joey Lina. And I associate, of course, with the, with the remarks made by the good senator and that uh, that we are in a revolutionary situation <clears throat> indeed uh, uh, i i uh, look at uh, our situation right now as in uh, a most uh, critical moment of our history uh, which is now punctuated by by uh, an economic crisis of uh, historical proportions, uh, supposedly uh, uh, caused by a pandemic. I say supposedly because uh, up to now this is being debated whether this is a natural occurrence or something manufactured, <clears throat> in which case if it was manufactured the so-called uh, solutions to it uh, may not be uh, the appropriate uh, solutions, but those that uh, have been initiated or imposed by, by those who were involved in the manufacturing of the fake disease. Now, <clears throat> I say that because one of the things that contribute precisely to the to the economic crisis of historical proportions, and I mean historical, because our GDP has been set has been set back to almost ten years back, and uh, <clears throat> uh, we we have lost about ten percent of the GDP last year. And we're expected to lose something even more than that uh, this coming year. We have unemployment of 22.5 million people, unemployment and underemployment. And uh, <clears throat> the level of uh, mortality of the economic crisis far, far surpasses those that we, uh, that we see uh, presented to us by the Department of Health. Now, um, the conditions of, uh, of uh, threatening our, our nation really is uh, exactly as, uh, as uh, Senator Alina had said, and I agree, um, on the matter of leadership, uh, but not on the basis of 
who, because there's no such thing as a Superman. But to me, the question that should be asked is why? And uh, the senator touched on it quite accurately when he says that whoever is presenting themselves as uh, the leadership for the coming period should be should be presenting solutions and not lip service, uh, as we have always heard from practically all previous administrations as they were trying to get themselves elected. The solution at hand that, that we're looking for right now is how, how will the country recover from this present situation? What are the economic recovery programs that should come out of our economic advisors and the leadership? Right now, they only rely on the vaccines as the as the magic uh, medicine or potion that's going to all of a sudden with the snap of the fingers bring us back to so-called normal. Well, this is not going to happen. Uh, on the other, rather, um, they will be presenting more and more variants so that more and more vaccines are going to be to be uh, manufactured then and, and uh, sold or sold to different countries. Now, the this rather than I, of course, democracy is very very important. Uh, after all, uh, that is what uh, things like the the uh, French Revolution has roughly. Uh, initiated and taught the world about uh, how people, uh, the people, people power can uh, change things. Uh, the same thing with the Declaration of Independence of, uh, of the United States. But the same thing with our own revolution in 18, uh, well, 1896, uh, where people were um, fighting oppression, but in all aspects, we we see that it was not democracy that they were fighting for. What they were fighting for was uh, uh, sovereignty, sovereignty of the human individual, and then sovereignty of their nation. Uh, they, they were against suppression, they were against oppression, they were against imposition of leadership. Whether they were perceived or not to be there, but they were fighting uh, for their humanity to be treated as human individuals. Um, so maybe that is where I would slightly differ from from the senator, and I'd like him to comment on this, that uh, <clears throat> the problem, I said, uh, when we're looking for a good leader, you're looking for a leader, not a president, not somebody who gets elected only. That president must be the leader. Yeah? And there is a difference. Yeah? There's a big difference. The president is elected through a democratic process. But the leader that you're looking for, uh, Senator Lina, and I'm looking for as well, is somebody who really will lead. And we're looking, um, we, I, we produce uh, uh, or we mount uh, certain qualities that we want coming from a leader. But the only thing that I think is important in uh, choosing the leader is that the leader knows who the enemy of the country is, who is the real enemy of the people. Uh, and right now, you have uh, people that people have uh, uh, already started to identify them. 
in our case, we have identified uh, the present oligarchies that is in control of public utilities who are in uh, partnership with uh, people in government, no, uh, which have imposed themselves on us for the past 35 years. No? And uh, once they got hold of the public utilities, they they used it as a milking cow to enrich themselves over the past how many decades. And now they now are in control of more than just the public utilities. They are in control of uh, your uh, political leadership. They are in control of many people in the Senate and, and in the House of Representatives. They are in effect in control of the election process using the Smartmatic and all of this, uh, using the resources that we ourselves have been giving to them via the public utility, um, via the public utilities. So to us, to us in the KDP, uh, that is one of the major enemy of the state. And unless we take back our country away from their control, we may not even have the luxury of really freely choosing who our leaders will be. And that to me is what sets it up uh, in a revolutionary situation. That's, that's just my comment. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Botts. Uh, uh, Senator Lina, can uh, maybe hear your reaction from uh, what uh, Professor Botts had uh, mentioned a while ago? Uh, maybe I was not able to emphasize or explain in detail uh, what competence means. Uh, and the political skill that is needed. Uh, we, we are not uh, we are not in a vacuum. We have to the leadership. When I talk of the leadership, it's the class of people, not just the president. It's it's uh, I talk of organization and movement that can influence the political life of our country, the economic life of our country. And so uh, that uh, organization, which will assume leadership, uh, not in an not necessarily in an electoral way, but that will be one of the activities of the of the organization. Um, competence means knowing your enemy, because how can you bring about the reforms that you need if? Uh, if you do not know who are the stumbling blocks to the uh, to the uh, to the reforms being implemented, so it goes without saying that there will be a uh, an analysis of the situation. Uh, you have your objective of uh, prosperity for all. Your objective of a meaningful democracy. How do you bring that about? So competence includes knowing how to bring about this, uh, these changes and achieving the objective. So to be competent is to be able to uh, carry out your objectives. And in the process, definitely, the stumbling blocks will be the power elite, economic elite in the country because they will not just give up their perks and privileges and i think that i mentioned that the they will hang on to the oligopoly structure they will hang on to the uh, political uh, dynasty set up because it feeds them it helps them um, they will install president who are their uh, puppets they will uh, capture the 
bureaucracy, the regulatory agencies. That's what we call regulatory capture. We are aware of that. And a true revolutionary should know what he is up to. So I, well, Butch, well, we, we are not uh, uh, divergent on that. Uh, it's just subsumed in the word competence, not just in running a government, but competence includes the wherewithal, the resources, the plan, how to make sure that the reforms are needed are carried out. And that will include elimination of the stumbling blocks. And they are there. They are there. Um, again, also competence includes how do you bring about um, more jobs and decent jobs? How can the people have share in the in the wealth that is being produced? So there must be concrete programs. And I'm sure, for example, if you talk about profit sharing, nako, lalaba ng kakaagad. If you talk of more um, offering to the public of shares that will be open, but a certain part is given priority to the workers, to maraming lalaban. So, the enemy must be identified. That's correct. That's correct. There's no quibble about that. And it falls under the word competence. The leadership must be competent. The organization and subsequently the movement should know who the enemies are or the stumbling blocks towards the realization of a given vision. When I say prosperity for all, that's too general. It has to be breaking, broken down into parts. Access to electricity, access to education, access to, uh, to livelihood um, until people are empowered that they can decide for themselves. Uh, Professor Bot, uh, any additional? Uh... Any additional comment? If there was none, then uh, Attorney Mel. Next, uh, Attorney Posada. Ah, uh, please unmute. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Un unmute. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Uh, uh, I was just about to say that I will not comment anymore. Uh, I just asked, wanted to hear the other comments as well. Okay, okay. Of Thank you. And uh, okay, Attorney Mel, you, are, you have the floor. I will just take off from the statements of Senator and, uh, and Professor Butch. No? Uh, I'm glad I heard more revolutionary words from Senator Lina and also the analysis of Professor Butch about the, the oligarchs. Because uh, coming from my background from Comolec, uh, sad to say, you know, we are guarding hard against Smartmatic, but we, we, we seem to forget another, a, a new brand of cheating that's emerging, which we are not paying much attention to under uh, Chairman Abbas. If you notice, the, our voter database is unusually bloated, unusually. Uh, I personally, uh, I, had, I had an experience when I was still in Como, like that there's this group of islands in the West Philippine Sea or between, uh, between Tawi Tawi and, uh, and uh, Malaysia, the Turtle Island groups, the Mapon Island groups, the hinterlands. There are prisons there that do not exist. Uh, there, there are... Uh, People there who vote, but they don't exist. They, they only exist electronically. And that, that seems to be the new brand, the, the, the new wave of cheating for 2022 under Chairman Abbas. Because he is from Mindanao. He knows the hinterlands very well. He knows places where which we cannot audit. So 
in other words, even if we are if, even if we are able to select a very good, a very perfect candidate for 2022, which which I doubt, no, no, no I doubt if any such if person. Any. Even if we we are able to vet a candidate, a good one, the problem is voting. Who will who will count the votes? Electronic voters who do, who have no real existence, they will be the one. They will vote in favor of a favored candidate. Favored by Smartmatic and by the new the new brand of cheating, which is the bloated uh, bloated voters, uh, electronic voters. So hopefully you can pursue some more the revolutionary aspect. And in, in fact, this this group this group of uh, Hill Ramos is is proposing to go back to the original the original 1899 Constitution, which by the way I'm 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 still waiting for a challenge. I, I gave out the challenge. To anyone to prove that the 89, that the original Saligang Batas, na soberadong Saligang Batas ng 1899, ay narepil na. Was it ever repealed? Was it ever abrogated? Was it, uh, is, it still, is it dead or alive? Because the 1935 Constitution forgot to repeal it. And all, all subsequent constitutions that we have, all the way until the 1987 Constitutions, they were based on 1935. So, legally, tech, legally speaking, 1899 constitution is still alive today. We have two constitutions alive. And whoever, you just have to recognize that. You just have to recognize that there is another constitution that is alive until now. Because what, what we have what we have is a bastard. Actually, we are having a, a situation wherein parang kinasal ka sa dalawang, uh, sa maraming tao. No? Yung original na kasal, yung lihito mong kasal ng sambayan ng Pilipino sa saligang batas ay yung 1899. Parang second bigamus na itong ano, 1935 constitution. Trigamus itong 1943 Japanese constitution, Mickey Mouse constitution. Quadragamus na itong 1973 ni Marcos. Pentagamus na itong 1986 ni ano, Cecilia Muñoz Palma. And hexagamus, hex, he, ano, parang hexagamus na itong, ano, itong 1987 natin ngayon. So parang anim ang pinakasalan, but there's only one. There's only one original, which is the 1899. A valid and subsisting marriage between the Filipino people and the 1899. Constitution, which is still alive until today, so we, we just have to recognize. We just have to recognize. I call it ancestral honor recognition. Honor our ancestral honor. Recognize our ancestral honor. We have an existing constitution. If there will be a wicked political dynasty after 2022, after Smartmatic proclaims the wicked political dynasty in 2022, we have this 1899 constitution to say we we have we, are, we have our own government. Under the original sobrang ng saligang batas, I hope we explore that angle, because legally speaking, I am willing to challenge anybody to prove that the 1899 constitution ever died. Did it ever die? Is it dead or alive? I'm I'm posing that challenge to anybody, and I'm willing to debate with anybody, because my stand it is still alive until today, as we are speaking right now. It is our constitution, our original constitution, and we will honor it. Because it is ours. Yun, yun lang po. Thank you, Attorney Mel. And uh, reaction from Attorney Posadas. Attorney Posadas, you are recognized. While we are waiting for Attorney Posadas, uh, any reaction? Any reaction from? Uh, uh, let, let me let let me just react uh, very briefly. Okay, Senator Lina. Attorney Mel said, no? uh, number one, there are many battles that we have to uh, uh, face. The biggest battle is the battle for the hearts and minds of the people. That's why I said a leadership that knows what to do recognizes that unless the people hearts and minds are won over then uh, we will never win any that the total war why we will just be a voice that is not being heard and accepted and that includes that that will need education massive education of our people 
But there is a uh, big hindrance in that uh, particular battle for the hearts and minds of people. There is this Facebook, Google, and they have perfected the art of big data, understanding and knowing the profile of each voter, and therefore influence them without them, without the voters or the people knowing that they are being influenced. That's another battlefront. It's a stumbling block in the battle for the hearts and minds of people. Yes, the padded votes, the Smartmatic itself, the elect, uh, election system, autom automated election system. But if we are organized, let's divide the work, Mel. The experts in that field, the techies who understand an uh, uh, automated election system, then they have to take the lead in that area and not wait for anybody else. As uh, In short, if the efforts are still uh, short, then um, more efforts must be exerted to uh, uh, make sure or to challenge smart the COMELEC in this area. And we have to be smart in doing so. So, ang kwang lang is division of labor. If we are not coordinated, if we are not organized, then uh, it will be difficult for us to win, to win the war. There's the war in the, in the battle in the West Philippine Sea. So I have taken uh, a big role in this uh, battle. No? But we have to educate our people. What is this West Philippine Sea? What is that arbitral award? So that it becomes an election issue. You know? So tulong-tulong coordinate now as to whether the 1898 Constitution is still binding. Uh, Mag-usap na lang tayo, Attorney Mel. I will not debate with you. you know? Because, for example, there is a Supreme Court decision declaring that there is only one title, practically, to the entire... Uh, Metro Manila or uh, the entire Luzon? Oh, eh, what do we do? What do we do? Can the real owner now of the original title, how can he get back what he owns? Even if the Supreme Court says so, na tama yung title niya. Oh, how do we... <laughs> so, I mean, what I'm saying is there are realities that we have to contend with. Uh, but the question is, how do we bring back the hand of time so that the Filipino people will go back to 1898 Constitution? So uh, th that will be a very tall order, uh, to say the least. But I'm prepared to listen because I have not addressed that issue uh, more deeply. I've heard it already, but hindi ko na digest pa. So, siguro, I will have to be enlightened by you on the, um, on the matter. Okay, Ben? Yes. Uh, Attorney Posadas, uh, additional comment or additional reaction, please? Attorney Posadas? So, Mel, are you satisfied with the uh, Senator Lina's explanation? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So, any comments or reaction from uh, anybody? My, I, have, I have a suggestion, Ben. Yes. Okay, go ahead. So, so that uh, um, we can squeeze the juice the sweet juice out of this uh, uh, encounter. May reaction na ako, no? May reaction na ako, no? Ah, sige, sige. May question na ako, no? Ah, uh, Carlo, just a moment. Uh, okay, do, 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 muna. Senator Lina has the floor. Okay. Um, okay, do. 
we, we can compare notes. I share with you what our group is doing. You share what you're doing. So let's see where we can uh, unite and push this point of unity. Para something concrete happens here. I'm sure you will not, uh, you will agree with me that it ultimately is the battle for the hearts and minds of the people. No? Eh, wala kang magawa sa demokrasya, kung ano yung uh, um, formal democracy, kung ano yung resulta ng eleksyon mo, as long as it is, uh, is uh, honest and orderly. Pero, Mel, lugi na tayo eh. Kahit na tama yung sistema ng eleksyon, kung yung utak ng tao ay uh, nalaso na sa maling pag-iisip, ay hindi rin tayo, hindi rin tayo panalo. Nanalo tayo sa procedural. Pero talo tayo doon sa sub substantive. Because the ones who will ele be elected, assuming the process is uh, clean, will just carry out their uh, own programs that na are not necessarily the programs that will solve the problems of our country. So, uh, uh, daming battle fronts. Uh, pwede mag-divide tayo ng, uh, ng trabaho. Para hindi lang kayo ang may trabaho sa ganyan, ano, Amel, o, then isi-share namin doon sa iba. O, sumama rin kayo dito. Yung iba, nasa battle nila sa nutrisyon. Sa nutrisyon, ano? Oo. Oo. So, yun lang, para lang konkreto. Ano? Okay. And I will just coordinate with the uh, maybe I don't know to heal or, or to mail. Uh, we can so that we can coordinate our efforts. Okay, thank you, Senator uh, Lina. And uh, Kong Congressman Villarama, uh, reaction please. Hello, hello. I, I'm Kong Kong Villarama. Abo po. Ah, uh, uh, magkasama po kami ni. <laughs> Sena to Jovi sa isang grupo matagal na. Sabi nila Mel, no? So nagkakaintindi kami at maganda yung kanyang proposal na magpalitan tayo ng mga konkretong uh, pangarap natin at anong ginagawa natin at the moment para sa ganun malaman natin saan tayo pwede magsama-sama at yung kulang na mga issue hanapin natin yung mga grupo naman na expert o itinutulak Yung mga issue na kailangan. Eh, yun lang po. Okay. Attorney Posadas, uh, are you still here? Any reaction? Ma'am Wilma, Manzanillo. So if you have some suggestion, reaction, etc., etc., please raise your hand. Uh, Attorney Posadas, you are recognized. Yes, okay. I, um, I'm i not ready to show on video. <laughs> okay. Uh, video appearance, but I'll just uh, use the audio. And uh, this is uh, related to uh, uh, Senator Lina's uh, uh, narrative and uh, also Melchor, Attorney Melchor McDonald's uh, contention that the uh, 1899 Constitution is still alive and valid and enforceable. But, uh, however, uh, there is really, it can be debated whether the 1899 Constitution is alive and valid and enforceable or not. But uh, there is a way a legal and constitutional and practical and people's will way, so to speak. Which, by the way, of course, the people's will is the creator of the Constitution and it's the superior uh, uh, manifestation of uh, a nation to govern itself. Of course, there's no uh, uh, 
contest or no uh, opposition to the fact that uh, the people's will is uh, the superior creator yep. of the constitution. Okay, be that as it may, what we would do is to do it on a parallel process of a constitutional, legal, and practical way. There is a provision, of course, in the, 18, in the 1987 Constitution that says that the, um, of course, the provision of the presidential oath of duty to redress uh, people's grievances. And to do hello to hello am, am i still yes 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 on? i don't okay. know that you're still on the floor all right uh what we can do is to invoke that uh, constitutional order of office uh in this case uh, president uh, duterte's order of office in the uh, provision of the 1987 constitution to redress people's grievances and people's grievances can be done in a legal constitutional way through that uh, um, through that uh, out of office uh, duty in a uh, plebiscite uh, uh, petition for a referendum that will of course go all through the requisites of a referendum requirements that if it's passed then it will require President Duterte to redress it by ordering a referendum. And ordering a referendum that uh, if the people or a majority of the people through a privacy will approve the adoption or shifting of the constitution to the 1899 constitution. Now, whether the 1899 constitution is alive or valid, it doesn't really matter because once the people uh, people's will expresses in a majority according to the requirements of the plebiscite, the then so be it. So President Duterte has to follow that uh, uh, referendum approval to shift into the 1899 constitution. If he doesn't, the petition will uh, be resolved that uh, uh, either President President Duterte and or the armed forces of the Philippines as an extension of the Katipunan army will have to enforce it. So the most that we can have will be a constitutional crisis. So be that as it may, we will cross the bridge when it comes to that point. But there is one, this is one way that is timeless, regardless of any president, as long as it's under the... Uh, a democratic constitution that has a provision for redressing people's grievances. So that's for a starter. That will be our main point, regardless of anything that we do. We can always talk about everything else, but we will have that as a uh, a solid uh, rammering, as a solid uh, post uh, to ram to ram it through uh, everybody's throat, so to speak. If it has to be. That way, because after all, it's a revolutionary idea. But it's not really a revolutionary idea because it's based on the provision that the people's uh, president under the Constitution has a, has a duty of, out of office to redress people's grievances. And if the people's grievances in a petition or a plebiscite for President Duterte to order a referendum and it gets approved, so, so be it. So that's for starters. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Attorney Posadas. Uh, may katanungan lang ako kay, kay Senator uh, Lina. Uh, dahil nabanggit mo kanina yung sovereignty reside in the people, uh, ano ang reaction mo, ano ang komento mo kung halimbawa gamitin ng mga mamamayan ang kanilang soberenya at ano ang mangyari kung hindi masunod? Uh, Senator Lina, can you react on this? I did react on that. Kung hindi mangyari yung kagustuhan ng taong bayan sa pamamaraan na sila mismo rin ang nag-approve, theoretically. So, I did 
a revolution is always uh, available. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so, so I, I I think I, I have to I, I have to excuse myself already, Ben. Okay, thank you very much for coming. I, I, I have a uh, another uh, engagement. Para sa para sa bayan din ito. Pinag-uusapan namin yung West Philippine Sea. Okay. Maraming salamat, Ben. Maraming salamat sa inyo, mga thank kababayan. God thank bless you, you and uh, please uh, keep safe. Keep safe. Okay, thank you. So, any uh, comment from what you have heard? Or any suggestion? Kasi sa akin, nakikita ko na majority sana, majority sana ng mamamayan ang gusto. Ang problema lang, kung minsan may conflict dahil ayaw ng uh, nakaupo, pakinggan ang taong bayan. Uh, Jeffrey Balsi, can you react on this? Yeah. Uh, itong pinapag-usapan kasi natin eh. Uh, refers to palaging we're, we're focusing on the form. No? Uh, wala akong, wala akong angal dyan sa form of uh, procedural and so on, so forth. No? But uh, yun nga, huling-huling sinabi ni Senator Lina is precisely what I wanted to point out. No? We are in first statement now, we are in a revolutionary situation. No. Nothing is going to happen, not even this thing about moving towards the constitutional crisis, not and moving towards 1899. If you do not really uh, have the country, the country is not controlled by the people anymore. No. If there is a, it is precisely what we have been pointing out in KDP, that the oligarchic control of the country uh, has meant that they have stolen our sovereignty. They own the country to go in connivance, in conspiracy with people in, in the uh, political leadership. I pointed out that most of the senators and a lot of the uh, House of Representatives and even in to some extent probably Malacanang are owned by the oligarchy. Every election time, uh, they are given monies by the oligarchy there, and there are only about 10, maybe a dozen of them no, that distribute these resources to them, to which, me, which means they owe their uh, positions in government to the oligarchy. Let us not uh, be fooled to think that the so-called oligarchy, while they earn Roughly about maybe six, five to six trillion pesos a year on the country will not be able to buy up the whole election by giving a couple of billion pesos to the Comelec. Uh, use, use your imagination. If they earn and they collect about five to six trillion pesos, I'm talking about um, electricity, water, and telecom only. How much does it take in order to be able to control Malacanang? 50, 100 billion? Barya lang po yan. How much does it take to tell the Comelec these are the electoral, these are the electors that we want, uh, elect, um, candidates that we want to come out. Barya lang sa kanila yan. And the sad part about it is 
the ones giving them the money is coming from us because we decided to privatize these public utilities. Ang public utilities po, gatasan talaga yan. Gatasan. They don't really even have to put up their investments from, uh, that, that uh, will give them the, the type of income they want. What they're getting is a privilege. It's a privilege of taking control of the public utilities and collecting from the people almost at will whatever they want because their agreements with government is government must not intervene. Oh, yan, ang kanilang, yan ang kanilang position. No? Now you cannot we cannot at this point look into this change in forms. We cannot look into this change towards 1899 you know, unless there is a, there is a physical takeover of our country. Okay. Now, without that physical takeover, no, um, wala, para tayong, ano, we, we forget that there is an elephant in the room and yet we are discussing uh, to high heavens everything that is idealistic. No? Okay, Butch. Uh, okay. Can I? Attorney Posada, you recognize. Hi, Professor Butch uh, Valdez, uh, Robert Posadas, how are you? Yes, Robert. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, it's very, um, very true and realistic. And uh, of course, this will be all taken into consideration. But I can make an analogy of uh, this situation right now. Uh, we're kind of a little bit uh, confused, if not totally confused, between the horse and the cart. Now, let's consider that the CART is the revolutionary government or the complete change that we want. It, in this case, specifically the 1899 Constitution, because uh, it's based on the fact, overall factual basis, that there is really a deeply entrenched, uh, deep-rooted corruption of oppression and uh, suppression in various subtle shapes and forms. So that what we're trying to do now is, of course, get organized the horses to, at this point in time, at least to push the cart. But we have to agree on the cart. We have to organize the cart. We know that, of course, uh, this uh, these uh, powers that are now in uh, position will not uh, uh, will not uh, give up They're, they will they will re they're, re they're really deeply entrenched and uh, and in, in power so it's understandable in any revolution they will also fight to the death <laughs> who wouldn't so it's understandable but the cart that we want now is something that we can organize and rally around with so that in the process of building the cart, we will now educate uh, the people and get them on board. And this is what by, I mean by at least starting with a orderly and a and, and constitutional and legal uh, petition for a referendum that will start or spark the the uh, the fire that will now spread for people to gather or to um, to um, uh, to centralize around so that they can at the same time be educated what this is all about because in in pushing the petition there's also the process of letting them know what the petition is all about so they will be uh, educated on the grassroots level that what the petition is all about is for a complete orderly change without which nothing will really ever happen. Because in, in logic too, a substance has to be completely changed because a substance has uh, different features and characteristics or natures. 
And if you don't change the substance completely in logic, the characteristics or features, in this case, the deeply entrenched corruption will always remain and contaminate. So you got to change the substance or the system. So that's the cart that we want. That's the cart we want to push and we have to organize it in a way that is legal now and constitutional. Now, once that is approved, so be it. If, uh, if, if the uh, if President Duterte in this case doesn't want, uh, doesn't want it done, then it's incumbent upon the Armed Forces of the Philippines to enforce it. So if the, if, if, uh, if the Armed Forces of the Philippines doesn't uh, want to enforce it, at the bottom, we will, uh, we will get some results okay. like but a constitutional Tony, crisis. So be it. Tony, but that will part, then, part the plan or the file. So um, what we are saying is we, we organize the card first. Okay, so yes, that we will uh, now we will now use the horses to pull it. So that's that's what that's my point. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, reaction uh, from uh, Abot. Let me, let me react on uh, Okay. I do not disagree, except that uh, uh, it it is uh, when we talk to the people. When we get the so-called people, the masses, to understand uh, this thing about the 1899 Constitution or the need to change the Constitution, uh, I would think that it is uh, not as exciting or compelling to them you know, as what... Uh, what they might feel in their stomachs. I, we, whenever, whenever we get the people behind anything, historically we have had the, we created an image of who the enemy is. In 1886, the result was it was a result of of the people being uh, the creating the image that Marcos was the enemy. And subsequent changes in government as well. Now, we focused on the individual leader as the enemy. And prior to that, uh, in the same way, uh, there have been uh, individuals that were used as the enemy in order to get elected. On the other hand, all the time, we forget the real enemy of the state. And it was when you're out, the one that had taken over our sovereignty. People misconstrue sovereignty being threatened by a but an, by an outside power trying to invade us, much the same way we talk about sovereignty now with China. But the more insidious attack on our sovereignty is the one from within. The one that you didn't notice. The one that had been uh, uh, given the privilege you know, of deciding who lives and who dies among the Filipino people. That's the present enemy of the state. We do not control our country. Not even with that referendum are we going to get any kind of result. That's my opinion. In order to educate them on the benefits of the 1899 vis-a-vis -vis the 1987, before anybody or a, a, a critical number of our people get to understand it, this is amidst all the uh, crisis that we face, the health crisis, the economic crisis that we face. While they are starving, while they are dying, we will talk to them about the constitution now, we have to identify who the enemy is. 
And once we take over, once we take, they, they understand that it is because of this oligarchic view in connivance with government officials that are the true enemy that are causing all of this suffering from them uh, that they are experiencing. Then we will get the people together. If we can tell them that once we take over back public utilities like electricity, and they will be given up to 60%, 70% uh, rebate or discount on their electricity bills. And that is a very real possibility if we can take it over. Uh, what do you think the public is going to react? I would say almost 100% because the public is not just the people and households. The public includes all businesses that are going to be benefiting from this. On the other hand, even if I agree that the 1899 constitution uh, has not been uh, abrogated, and I think we should go back to that when we, give, we get the chance. At this point, how can we make them uh, feel militant against the, uh, to push for the change in constitution to 1899 when they are already now suffering um, with, uh, in trying to survive, trying to avoid that? So this is where I am saying, let us put everything in perspective. We are very idealistic about our, I am very pessimistic on the other hand about uh, Comelec, about our leadership, about uh, Duterte, no? um, everything, no? and that they are done, what they are tending to do, they're, they're, they're intending to force vaccination, force vaccinate our people, they're ramming down our throats these ideas about about uh, COVID-19 and, and new, new variants when there are contradictory statistical information that they themselves are coming up with. You know? All of these things. You know? uh, as far as personally, I'm concerned, and I'm sure a lot of people, this government has lost all credibility. And it is the most ideal time. This is why we are in a revolutionary situation. It's the most ideal time to get our people you know, all to act as one against the enemy of the state, the principal enemy of the state right now. Okay. And, and whoever are in connivance with them in government. Okay. Reaction, uh, Attorney Posadas? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, Professor Boots, uh, that's a very uh, good, uh, excellent point. And that's what uh, I'm referring to. In getting organized into a solid uh, cart, we identify, in identifying and forming the cart, we identify the enemy. And that's uh, just to start. Uh, it's a part of the process of building the cart so that. Uh, uh, at the same time, while well, we're identifying the horses that will pull it. So it's likened to uh, we're, we are ahead of ourselves with the, with the horses uh, without really identifying or forming the cart that we want to push and to be pulled by the horses. So that's, that's a good point. But in, in uh, organizing the cart, we identify the enemy. And in so doing also at the same time, try a, a different uh, uh, various uh, sub uh, processes in that uh, also it, the card can also invoke the, the article 12 of the constitution that you have been pushing for uh, the uh, government takeover of public utilities because of a national emergency. So that's one part of the whole uh, pillars of the card so that once we identify the en real enemy in the cart or enemies 
be it underground and above ground and whoever else, whether foreign or or uh, local or uh, territorial or regional, then we can all put this all together and at the same time solidify into a cart wherein we now can have the horses ready. So there's no point, uh, I mean, there's uh, really no argument in that uh, we will have to recognize who the real enemies are, whether above ground or underground, and or foreign or local or national. So, so my point is to get organized around this cart that will consider all of these uh, uh, narratives and processes. But we have one solid uh, uh, ramming point that will solidify by all these processes, meaning identifying the enemies, educating the people. So this needs to be organized into one solid ram that whether it happens or not, it can have traction. Whatever the result will be, so be it. Be it uh, uh, we, the result will be uh, a, uh, a revolution or not, but we still have, we have to start something because we cannot uh, just wait for these uh, people or President Duterte to, to apply the national emergency on public utilities. We just have to have a spark, a solid spark that will be part of the processes in the cart. Uh, okay. So, Attorney Posadas, kaya kanina tinanong ko si, may tanong ako kay Senator Lina, uh, ano ang mangyari kung if the sovereignty of the people was exercised but the government did not uh, heard what uh, they are clamoring? Ano ang mangyari sa kanya paninaw? Pero hindi niya nasagot kanina yon Pero para sa akin, sa lahat na nagkinig, we have our constitution, may kasabihan, when the law, the law, I mean, all laws are made by man. Once the law is violated and that needs to be amended. So, kaya, yan nga na ang 1899 constitution, dapat lang, kung hindi naman ito yung nasunod ang 1987, let's go back to the 1899. Yes. Constitutional crisis will be the bottom line. So if the, if the Supreme Court has to act, if the Supreme Court doesn't have to act, then it's also the relic, the, uh, the relic on, on its duty. So now we have utilized every means and effort to make everything peaceful and orderly, legally and constitutionally. When even the Constitution, when the Supreme Court itself, which is the uh, the um, the institution to protect and enforce the constitution uh, does nothing about it and if so and so be it then there will be a revolution and let the armed forces take its sides hmm. so wouldn't it be better for the armed forces to to just uh, invoke the uh, the plebiscite or referendum whether it's been approved or not that it's the people's will because after all it's been started and we have exhausted all means and ways to to have a complete change because without complete change or logical change, nothing will ever change. Okay. So it will be useless. Yeah. So, uh, so there it is will a... be a constitutional crisis after all and let the Supreme Court decide on it. And if it doesn't decide on it, let the armed forces take over. Yeah. Whether for the people or for the present government, let something happen. Then that will create this part. Uh, uh, Attorney Posadas, I think uh, Geoffrey Balsi has a uh, comment on that. Uh, Geoffrey Balsi, you are recognized. Please unmute. Geoffrey Balsi, please unmute and uh, say something. Yeah, okay, please unmute. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So I'm in general agreement with what everyone says about the rule of law, about the oligopoly, about poverty and the tyranny. But there is a higher rule of law even than our very own state. It is natural law. Uh, can you, can someone please un unmute themselves? It is. 
Ayong naga walk for freedom ang nag ano social distancing tayo Somebody is distracting us sir Mel Mel can you Hello unmute uh Hello please Mel Hello Hello Ah saglit mo na Jeff na igin pakita pala niya yung naka live na walk for freedom to Sandali lang ha So tingnan natin Okay Mel go ahead Sandali. Sunod ka na lang, uh, Jeff. Mel? Okay. Makita mo ang nag-lakad naga sa ulan. Okay, kasi ko po yan pong may, may militang so, permit, no? So, pinahanap ka po ng lugar. Teka lang, matakas sa ulan. Okay. Hey, si Al. Al. So, Al. Yo! So, ano balita ano, ano balita sa inyo diyan? Ah. Opo, sige po, tayo. Sige po, mag-march po tayo para Ah, sana na lang ako tayo ma Nasa na kayo natin, natin no. Sana so, ano lang isyu niyo. Sa atin din natin. Kaya sa atin. Ito ito. Yung santo po natin ng paglabas ng Declaratory relief para sa mga kapatid ating polis at militar na anak ko horrors para magpapakulang. So today, pakingkontak po yung mga kapatid ating kapulisan. Uh, kung kayo ayaw nyo na magpapakulang, nandito po ang meeting maharlika. Uh, ilabas na po namin ang form para kayo po ay makapag-fill out at may paglaban pa rin nyo ang inyong constitutional right to life. Ang pagiging strategy po natin, magsasaba po tayo ng kaso sa buong Pilipinas. Buong Pilipinas, isimula natin, hindi nila alam kung saan, pero buong Pilipinas, magsasamba tayo. Ngayon, Okay, medyo... Ngayon, in-announce na po natin noong araw ng Sabado ngayon. Kaninang madaling araw, may kumontak na po sa atin. Pagkampihan na huwes galing sa Mindanao. So, sunod-sunod na po yan. Kaya wag po kayong mag-alala. Tuloy-tuloy lang po ang ating pagsusumikap. At tayo ay lalaban para kalayan natin pamili at kalayan natin na magtipon-tipon para ipahayag ang ating mga talobin. Okay. So sa okay. mga nanonood po ngayon, narinig ko po si ano, si Thank attorney. Uh, uh -oh. Ngayon po ay ano na tayo, magmamarcha na po tayo. Saan location nyo ngayon? Okay. Uh, tundan po lang natin. Tundan po natin ang truck ng KDP. Nandito na po ang Patriots. Ah, KDP. KDP ang ni dyan. Lalabas. Dami nyo pala. Okay, Eto na. Magsisimula na. Ang march ang malupit natin. Ingat kayo. Ingat. Ah. Ah, ingat. Dumalakas sa ulan. Punta ko sa harap. Tatay sa harap. Magkasama na kayo ni Nakapre at saka ni Rock. Ay, saglit lang po mag-headset ako. Saan po mag-headset ako? Sabi ko, magkasama na kayo ni Narok at saka ni Kapre. Hello po? Magkasama na kayo ni Kapre at saka ni Rock. Hello po? Yes, marinig mo ko. Yes po, andito na. Ito si Kapre, kasama ko. Ako na ngayon. Okay. Ito lang tayo dito. Ito po. At ito ang mga Patriots sa likod. Ang nakapayong. 
Pero tuloy. Mabuhay kayo. Talaga naglakad ah. Mabuhay po. Hands off. Anak ko yan. Huwag niyo. Pakialaman. No to na. Mandatory. Abolish ITF. ITF. Do pay resign. Kissing Maharlika flags. Habol ako. Po. Habol ako after plenary. Ma'am Rose. Hello. 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 Despecho tayo sa unang ano, pila. Grabe, ang dami Patriots na katuwa. Kahit umuulan, tinaglalaban nila yung mga arapatan nila. Woo, woo, woo. Ingat kayo, ingat. Nakakatuwa. Maraming salamat po. So, okay, uh, kung may thank mga you very much. Patriots na mga Al, at uh... salita. Ayan, may area tayong pupuntahan. Thank you po. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Ingat kayo. Ingat. Salamat po. Salamat po. Okay. Thank you. Mel. Putol-putol na kayo. Mel. Can you hear me? Nawala si Jeffrey. Okay, sir. Sir, sir, sir bots. Ah. Okay, share mo kay, kay Professor Bots. Pakinggan natin ang KDP. Okay, Professor Bots, you are recognized. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, gusto ko lang... Uh, uh, Mag-congratulate dito sa mga nagre-rally ngayon sa may baklaran. Uh, bagamat uh, malakas ang ulan, bagamat malakas ang ulan at uh, bumabagyo, andyan pa rin sila at, uh, at uh, nag-sacrifice para lang may pahiwatig sa ating mga pamahalaan at sa mga tao na uh, ang uh, ang uh, gising maharlika at ang KDP at ang mga iba pang mga kaalyadong uh, organisasyon na nakasama dito sa rally ay uh, naninindigan at uh, hindi kami uh, pumapayag uh, dito sa plano ng gobyerno na gawin mandatory ang vaccination ito po ay labag sa pinaka basic na human rights at uh, lalong-lalo na uh, dahil atong mga etong mga vaccines na ito ay experimental drugs no? that have uh, already documented uh, uh, thousands of deaths around the world no? and uh, many side effects no? at uh, kami po ay nag-aalangan 
hindi lang sa aming mga kalusugan, kundi din sa aming mga kapamilya na baka may mangyari sa kanila at uh, hanggang uh, baka mamatay. Dahil uh, marami na rin cases dito sa Pilipinas na hindi, masya, hindi rin report ng DOH pero namamatay sila pagkatapos nilang mabakuna. No? At ang aming pong mga ibang uh, uh, kamag-anak, uh, ganyan na rin ang nasapi. Dalawa, dalawa na po yung uh, halos buntik ng mamatay. At, at ito pong mga vaccination na ito, ang ginagawa nila, pinapapilma kayo ng waiver bago kayo mabaksin. No? Waiver. Ang ibig sabihin, kung ano man mangyari sa inyo, magkasakit kayo, mamatay kayo, o magkaroon kayo ng malaking diferensya, wala pong pananagutan ang uh, gobyerno at ang yung mga nagtuturok ng uh, ng injection sa inyo wala po silang pananagutan ito po ang nakakalungkot uh, ang pangyayari ngayon mga panahon na ito hindi lang yon pag sinabi nilang na dumamatay ka sa covid agad-agad kinikremate ka para wala nang ebidensya at wala nang uh, mag-autopsy kung ano talaga ang kinamatay ninyo, ng mga kamag-anak nyo. All of these things are uh, are against the uh, uh, the Nuremberg Code no? uh, na sinasabi na ang, uh, ang tao ay dapat uh, hindi pipilitin minom o magpabakuna uh, para magawin siyang eksperimento. No? Kinakailangan na intindihan niya at kinakailangan uh, yung mga namamahala na gumagawa ng eksperimento uh, ay uh, kailangan mananaguta dito sa kanilang mga ginagawa. So, may po sa KDP at sa gising mga lika uh, nakikisa dito sa worldwide rally today. Happening today around the world. No? Against uh, mandatory vaccine. Promoting promoting ivermectin uh, a security uh, Uh, a security uh, drug together with the hydroxychloroquine, a security drug uh, that the government refuses to promote. No? Uh, yan po ang aming uh, pahayag. Thank you, Professor Bot, sa uh, mga information. At nakikita namin na uh, uh, kahit maulaan, rain or shine talaga, uh, ang ating mga patriotiko ay nakipaglaban ng kanilang mga karapatan. At pagkatapos ng plenary natin, nahabol ako sa kanila. So, any comments? Jeffrey, where are you now? Me? Ayan, sorry. Naliligo na lang. Hanapin ko muna going to attorney Aaron, ha? Okay, so sisikapin ah, namin yung sasakyan nasa gitna para makapagsalita siya habang hindi okay, pa pinaalis ng mga militar. Si attorney okay, Aaron. So, ayan, nakapila po kami ngayong lahat. Nakaridi Wait. po. Okay, nasa na ba? No, pwede mapakinggan si Atty. Aron. Ayan, ito na po, sir. Ayan. Sir, live the storm. Ayan. Hello po, hello. Okay. Hello po. Masa nung po yan? <laughs> Salita ko po, sir. Hello. Kamusta kayo? Marami na nanonood dito. Ah, marami. Marami. Uh, hello po sa uh, inyo. Uh, sana kung nasa naman kayo, uh, mag-video ring ngayon. Tapos, uh, dumabas. kay sa bahay niyo ilabas yung uh, karapatan niyo no para sa inyo sa atin kung ayun natin di dapat ipaglaban natin ang no, constitutional rights natin to no? uh, hindi niyo kailangan magpunta dito pero sana kung nasaan man kayo uh, lumabas kayo ng bahay niyo at ipagpahayag at malaki tulong yan sa ating sa ating lipunan ah uh, ayung linggo pa lang ito meron kami i-announce sa uh, Gising Maharlika TV uh, ito makakatulong sa atin uh, buong bansa no at malalabanan natin yung medical martial law sa madaling pinakamadaling paraan uh, abangan niyo po sa Kising Mahardikat. Yes, okay. Thank you, Attorney. Okay, Ayan po. You. Habang hinahanda po namin yung aming sasakyan para mag at least makapagsalita si Attorney dito ng maiksing panahon po. Ayan. Attorney. 
Putol-putol ka na. Kami po ay makapila yan. At talagang makalikas. Ayan. Ba't ako ikaw ay po? Ay, ma'am, ano masasabi niyo po sa ating activity ngayon? Ito ang simula ng ating pakikipaglaban sa karapatan natin mabuhay. May kalayaan. At huwag tayo mag-iktima nitong vaccination na ito na experimental. Okay. Ano ba, attorney? Ako niya, umiyan. Mga abogado pala natin, nagapaulan. Nagpapakita lang ng talagang seryoso ang laban. So sa mga naka sa mga nagaobserba at uh, nakakita mamaya pag uh, na post ng gising Marlika ang mga kapangyari mga pangyayari sa daanan diyan niyo makikita na talagang ang mga patriotiko natin ay talagang mga patriotic hindi yung patriotic patriotic lang ula nag init laban So, any comments from uh, anybody? Makahabol pa pala ako nito kasi 11, nandun pa lang sila sa ah, hindi pa sila nakarating ng kapo. Pwede siguro. Ah, pasensya ang uh, ang mga nakaabang no kasi hindi lang uh, ang napag-usapan ng Shadow government kasali sa ngayon na uh, walk for freedom ng Gising Marlika. Kasi ang Gising Marlika ay sumusuporta rin sa Shadow government. So pasensya kayo na putol-putol ang uh, dating ko minsan ng mga naka uh, naglalakad papuntang uh, UP entrance. Pero balita ko, nandun pa lang sila sa, ayaw ko kung hindi pa yata sila nakalampas ng Kiapo. Nasa baklaran pa sila? Nasa baklaran pa sila. Malamang maghapon to. Haponan tayo doon sa UP mamaya. Tama-tama lang yan. Kung matapos ng plenary natin, makahapon pa tayo doon. Sabay ako sa iyo, Sir Ben. Okay. Uh, announcement pala na uh, uh, merong sad to see na kay Prof. Hell na meron siyang minor car accident during biyahe niya. So, hindi siya makakahabol sa atin sa plenary. So, it, eh, it's up okay. to our speaker. Okay, Mel. Okay, naayos yung stage. Sa'yo may pasingit lang muna, ha? Naayos yung okay. stage. Okay. So, dito, bibigyan natin ang pagkakataon. Magtalita po sa ato na Aaron ngayon, ha? Okay. So, okay. nandun na siya. Habang yung militar doon, nakikipag-negotiate din. Ito yung may may ito yung may may phone. Itong ano na to. Yan, dito siya. Okay. Uh, magsimula na, Sir Mela. I-ano ka lang. Okay. okay. Dito ang umaga ulit sa inyo, mga ka-GM, ano, sa mga ka-Patriot, mga kababayan. Uh, ngayon, pag-usapan natin, no, kung ano yung mga naging strategy natin para labanan ang medical martial law na ito. Sinimula na po natin i-launch today para sa mga kapatid natin kapulitan ang declaratory relief na template para fill out sila at paisang pa ng kaso as soon as possible. Isasampan natin ang kaso all over the country. Lahat ng RTC ay nasapan natin doon ang lahat. At pagkita-kita na lang sila sa Supreme Court. Hindi magtutupatugma ang mga reasoning Sigurado tayo, hindi ba ito pagkumatong ba ang reasoning ng mga trial court? At isa dyan ay papanigan ng korte. At yun, nasaklawan natin. Pangalawa, ito no, uh, ilang araw lang pa ito natin nang in-announce na tayo maglalabas na ng template. Meron na ang mga nakipag-ugdayan sa atin, no? Na mga doktor, mga bugado, at mga judges. 
At sila ay makikipagtulong at tawo-tawaan ng ating pinaglalaban. At sila ay kaisa. So, gumagana. Gumagana ang ating mga pinaglalaban. Maraming nakikinig. Iyan lang sa amin, maglalabas kami sa giting makarika ng contract form. Ito ang next strategy natin. May mga kapatid tayo na mga naniniwala na sa pangulam. At sinasabi nila sa atin, hindi tayo ang otoridad para magpaliwanag at mag-improve ng pangulam. Ngayon, para sa kanila, mamimigay tayo ng kontrata. Dahil, kampanya sila sa mga experts nila. Ang kontratang ito ay para sa mga doktor o kung sino man ang magpapakulang sa kanila. Ipapaliwanag lahat ng risk. Dapat ipaliwanag nila ang lahat ng risk na makukuha sa bakulang. Lahat ng pwede nilang magdapong sumapong sakit sa kanila at lahat ng pwede mag-epekto kahit kamatayan dapat nila ipaliwanag. At kung at kung isa man dito sa mga epekto na ito ay sumapong sa kanila, dapat mag-take ng responsibility for damages kung sino man magtuturok at kung sino man may panukala dahil ayaw ng gobyerno at ng mga manufacturer na magkaroon ng liability kaya sila nagpapag-issue ng waiver. Kaya tayo naman, mag-issue tayo ng kontrata. Wala naman sigurong problema kung mag-issue ng kontrata. Total, kampansin na sa bakulang. Siguro naman, hindi naman mahirap magbigayin ng personal responsibility for damages. Kung totoo talagang efektibo ang bakulang. So, mga mga kapatid, no? mga kababayan natin, mga ka-GM, mga ka-KTV, mga katipuneros, abangan niyo po, magiging mahal natin at tulungan din natin. Hindi lang yung mga, mga nabilog na ang kundo. So, maraming salamat na nandito kayo. At kung saan man kayo sa panig ng Pilipinas, huwag kayong mag-alala. Lahat ng problema natin bilang bayan, bilang bansa, hahanapan natin ang paraan at paglalaban natin dahil tayo'y sama-sama. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga. Thank you, Attorney Aaron. Attorney Aaron, sino pa ba? Ayan. Ayan na. Talagpaan po natin ang kumpakti. Superstar! Maganda nga, umaga sa inyo na. Tapos ay siya nagpalit ako yung may sakit pa rin. At sinahali ako ng kumpakti na talaga. Gising pa ako ng lulutong. At naman sa inyo dahil hindi kayo nagpapisa. Grainer, sa nandito ka ng tao. Mabuhay kayo lahat. Lahat sa mga katipuneros natin. At mga kabahay niya. Kasi mga paisahin mo na noong kita. At tumutulong sa ating mga aktividades. Na kayo ay hindi napagod. At tuloy-tuloy po na masaya ako na nakikita ko kanina, kinikilig ako na nasa taxi pa lang ako dahil ang dami na natin, dati anim lang kami. Ayun, mga 600 na tulad ako. Salamat, Brother Rock. Okay, so any reaction from anybody here? Ma'am Wilma, any reaction? Babes Abanto, Jen, Michael Alunan na nagpaalam sa kanina. So nagsi Alisa ng iba, kala nila tapos na. Enrico Merioles, Do you have any? Okay, no comment. Engineer Pedrigon, Ferdigon. Any comment? Yes, sir. Apo, meron. Okay, go ahead. Well, ayang konting lang tayo, but anyway. Actually, yung maganda yung presentation ni Senator Lina. And the comment ko ay aside from the focus on leadership, kailangan siguro ng attention also to organizing of the grassroots. Kasi yung leadership, relatively madali asikasuhin yun. Kakaunti yung mga nandiyo doon. Pero yung grassroots, million yun. Kailangan ng skills para maka-organize ka ng mga tagasunod. And I experienced that, katulad ni Senator Lina, 
naging aktivista din ako sa Diliman. Eh, nagsimula ako in my exactly after 20 years old nung no, ako ay nagsimula. And I think hanggang ngayon nandun pa rin yung spirito sa akin. So yung organizing is very important. And how do we organize? Along issues, causes na familiar sa kanila. Sabi nila, 
Ang Pilipino daw ang pinakamatapang lalain sa buong mundo. Hindi niyo wala po ba kayo doon? Pero sabi nila, kung ano na tayo sa pagkakaisa, papayang pa tayo doon? Pero sa lahat ng nandito, nagkakay na ba tayo? Bakit ako na sa mga lahat? Para sa mga buhay ng mga anak natin? Para sa ating mga mahal na buhay. Ito po yung ating pagkalaban po natin ito. I dare you to get organized in your area. I dare you to change the lives of your neighbors. Paano? Meron na tayong authority. Hanapin nyo na lang sa yung mga namatay ng naturo, yung mga napipilitan ng naturo, yung mga nagdadyan. Kakasuhan natin lahat ng mga nanggago sa kanila. May authority na tayo. Kung meron magpuhay sa Ayun na to. Kay Kato. Sino ba ang nigger dito? Kayo na si Sir. Tapos na, tapos na. Alis na tayo. Asan si sila, sila ano? Tapos na tayo. Asan sila si Capri? Tapos na. Asan sila Capri? Sinita sila ng pulis. Nagka problema yata sila. Mel, malamang makarating sila sa UP mamaya alas 3 na. Nasa ano, uh, ay, nasa panahon ng ano, tawag nito, uh, consultation. May mga pumasok na mga militar, polis, o yun. Ano, nakikipag, ano, nakikipag, uh, yung shit, yung sila, sila kap, sila, al, ay sinusin yan sa ating mga militar. Anyway, pinasocial distancing nila, hindi nangingin na silang permit no, dito sa local, parang local permit yung hinihingi nila. Okay, kasalukuyan pang nasa negosisyon, 
with al until yan mga okay. Hindi ito din makapasok doon kasi sa stahin ka ng polis. Hindi ko nga alam kung nasa sila. Nakikipag-usap kami sa mga commander natin, sa mga police. No, uh, alam niyo naman na mainit kahapon pa na nag-announce mga GCQ with high 10, tapos huwag daw yung mga super spreader events. Pero hindi po tayo papatigil. No? Uh, Tapos po natin sila naman. Okay. So, ano na? Disperse na muna. Okay, disperse na muna. Back sa inyo po. Okay, thank you. Ingat kayo dyan, ingat. Okay, disperse na po muna. Teka, hindi ko marinig. <laughs> Ako po yun ang headset. Ay, mag- Okay, so naka-disperse na po kami. Kailangan na uh, disperse habang habang kausapin o kinausap pa nila ngayon. Kasalukuyan, yung mga, polis, yung mga militar po dito sa Pasay. Okay, okay na? Okay na tayo. Okay, sir. Any reaction sa ating mga nasa panel? Ang saya-saya ng area. Naka... Nag-iinit sila doon. Kahit basang-basa sa ulan. <laughs> Kahit maulan, draw niya. Apo yan? Oo. <laughs> so, kung magbibigay sa mga ticket, iitahin yung pangalan natin. So, kung magbibigay ko sila ng ticket, yung militar, hindi ba hindi na rin natin. Ano yung ticket na yan? Strip stick? <laughs> Baka tinikitan sila doon sa social distancing. Baka lang, baka pasal ka ngayon tayo doon. Baka sila kayo ng pangalan. Okay. Yan, may abogado naman. Nandiyan naman sila... Attorney Poli at saka si ano, si Aaron. So, magbigay doon ng patermay mga polis, uh -huh. ipanin doon pangalan. <laughs> okay, so ay meron na tayong 3 hours and 20 minutes. So, kung na, papunta ka ba sa, papunta ka ng UP, meron? Hindi na yun sila aabot ng office, sir. Mag-disperse na yan after, ano, under uh, baklaran. Oh, malamang. Oo. Uh, so, oh. Kung habol tayo, baka maghiwalay-hiwalay na yan mamaya. Oo. Oh. Ikaw, kung habol ka, kung may sabay ako sa iyo para makasakay. Pero, pero kung sa baklaran pa lang sila sa ganitong oras, malabo na makarating sila ng UP. Ay, hindi na ito kung tayo ng UP. Okay. Uh, hindi ko alam naman ng sermon pa sa iyo lang. Hindi ko alam kung anong plano talaga. Pero, uh, hanap ko si Al. Kung pwedeng tanong kung anong plano. Andito na si Al tapos si Rob. Wait. Tutuloy pa ba yan sa UP? Kaya tanong kung tuloy daw ba sa UP. Hello, sa Commonwealth po. May mga tao po ba sa Commonwealth? I believe hindi po tayo makakamarcha papunta doon. Pero i-update po po kayo. Mag-usap po tayo mga patriots dito. Um, right now, what's happening is 
there's a form going around and the form is for the people fighting sa ano natin sa legal fight and then sa vaccine exemption right card so yun po yung na achieve po natin ngayon and then uh, we will talk with the patriots kung anong next next plan no um ginawa po natin ngayon is napagpayag naman yung mga kailangan magpayag no med, pero medyo aggressive lang yung mga police dito pero we are ano uh, ano naman coordinating with them so stand by no sa mga patriots ano lang tayo no uh, the sal as well and uh, continue to fight sa so, mga gusto kong magpayag tuloy po tayong magpahayag maraming salamat po pero hindi na yan matutuloy sa UP Journal Okay. Pag sa inyo sa UP. Paano kami ni Serbe na pupunta kung ng UP kung after dito. So hanggang 12 lang yung sesyon dito eh. Ah, okay. So, sandali ha. Sana ba ulit? Sana ko lang ulit. Sa so, ngayon kasi para nakiwahiwalay mo na yung mga tao. Social distancing. Kasi tapos sinatanong, tapos pupunta ko sila sa UP. Sige po, kasi ano, I will update you within uh, two minutes kung anong plano kasi the the Patriots here, we are not sure na everyone is capable of going there. Okay, if you can accommodate the carpool. Pero, andito po, uh, kompleto pa po tayo. So, we will update you. Asa. Abrat lang ako. Ah, okay. Okay, yun sir. Balik sa inyo. Ah, sige, sige. So, ano yung plano natin, Sir Ben? So, kung ganyan ang uh, sistema, eh, ano na lang natin, ipakigyan na lang natin muna sila. Kasi tingin ko may problema doon. Eh. Pero we have to wait, 2 minutes lang daw. Eh. Tingnan natin kung ano ang balita sa 2 minutes after. Okay, stand by. Okay. Hindi ko alam, walang ano. Stand by lang, stand by pa din. So yun po yung sa mga bagong viewers natin uh, na papanood nyo ngayon yung ongoing Walk for Freedom uh, rally na nasa baklaran ngayon at sila ngayon ay uh, pinapadisperse ng mga ating mga uh, polis dyan dahil uh, sa social distancing and of course sa protocol na pinapalakad okay so hopefully na mag, um, kung ano yung plano ma-update din tayo para tayo ay makasama sa, sa kanila after this our plenary session kung makakahabol pa tayo. So, kung hindi, uh, maybe next time naman, oh. at least we help na ma iparating natin yung mga nangyayari dyan sa area na hindi rin nakikita doon sa uh, live ngayon sa Kising Maharlika. So, iba yung ating uh, nabubiyos cross Sir Nolly na nagbibigay sa ating na naipid. Okay, so in a reaction sa ating mga area dyan, sa ating mga nasab. Nol, sino yan ang nagsalita na yan? Nol? Okay, uh, ngayon kasi para nagkumplituhan pa lang tayo sila ng perma. Uh, kasi okay. yun yung tayong bibigyan ni Atonio ng yung doon sa ano, parang yung ID. Okay. Pero ngayon, ongoing pa rin kung ano talaga piling gawin pa. So, standby pa rin po. Ah, uh, so... 
Ganon oh, meron. Standby, standby pa po. Uh, parang kinukumplito lang po yung mga nandito na makakuha ng uh, perma doon sa pinapapira po ni Atty. Arag po. Ang sa email na lang natin padala natin email. Ah uh, yeah, oo oo oo. Yun na lang po, yung mga hindi pa naka-perma din ipapadala doon sa email, okay? Oo. Oh, so, yun na lang yung kinukumpleto dito sa ngayon. Then I think picture taking siguro din is parang parang dispersed na. Parang dispersed na yung parang sinasabi. Kung doon okay. nag-uusap pa sila, sila malayo pa sila sila at saka sila ah uh, pray. Ah uh, ganoon pa rin, nasa nasa Yeah, pa rin no, nga lang. dito pa rin sir, hindi pa rin, hindi pa rin umalis, no? Nang, ano lang. Kanya kanyang Nol. Nol, marinig mo kami? Nol. Ah, uh, Mel, paki ano mo ng uh, email address ng uh, mapadalahan na para mapadala natin doon. O sa uh, GM group chat. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, sir, what? Yeah. So, gusto ko lang sabihin uh, Okay, go ahead Gabot uh, This is precisely what I was uh, trying to point out kanina na itong ang pinakalaban talaga ng tao itong mga oppression tsaka suppression oh. and right now this is the form of uh, suppression na hindi etong hindi pagpapayag ng ating pamahalaan na makapag uh, labas ng uh, hinaing hindi dito sa mga pamamalakad nila no we're not we're not trying to overthrow government we are not insurgents we are not criminals we just want our people to know uh, what is going on uh, and lalong-lalo uh, na dito sa Uh, nakakatakot na ginagawa tayong lab rats ng mga guinea pig. At nasa kanila uh, kung gusto nilang pa ang mensahe naman kung gusto nilang pabakuna, okay lang. Pero huwag pipilitin ng tao. Yan ang ating uh, mensahe. Pero itong uh, napakasimpleng mensahe, pipigilin pa tayo ng gobyerno sa pamamagitan ng mga iba-ibang mga salita kunwari uh, social distancing kunwari uh, protocol at lahat-lahat na no? para lang wag tayong magkaroon ng pagkakataon ni paiwatig sa ating mga mamamayan itong mga issues na ito uh, yan, yan ang hinaharap natin uh, tuwing we, every time we think about teaching the people getting them to understand what's going on, teaching them about 1899 Constitution, we will not be able to do that. No? Uh, teaching the masa what is important and so on. We will not be able to do that under the present circumstances, present situation. No? We have a government right now that is committed to suppress any kind of um, opposition to uh, the dubious uh, disease or pandemic that is going on and more so to they don't want any kind of rejection to come out of these vaccines you know? despite the fact that it is known that the these vaccines are only experimental uh, stage you know? so uh, dito tayo nagkakaroon ng problema you know? That's why, um, eh kung dito na lang, pipigilin pa, tapos ginuguto man tao, walang um, makain, walang trabaho, no? tapos pagpapabakuna ka pa, kailangan magsasign ka pa ng waiver na wala, ka, wala silang uh, responsibilidad kung anong mangyari sa'yo. All of these things are... Uh, 
are signs of uh, no, uh, tyranny and despotism ang tawag dyan. Hindi lang martial law, hindi lang ano, ano to, fascism, tyranny, and despotism. No. Uh, and we are against this. We are not, uh, we are not ideological. We are not communists. We are, uh, we reject communism as a matter of fact, no? But meron such a thing as talagang uh, paninindigan para sa ating pagkatao, no? And if they want to treat us like cattle, kaya nilang uh, kaya nilang itulak tulak papunta sa slaughterhouse, no? <laughs> we have to stand up, no? At ito yung this is an example what's going on right now in Baklara when the police is told that to disperse that little group that is just trying to understand the issue. No? Why is it that uh, mandatory vaccination uh, is not, is not uh, good for the people? and that the people's freedom to get vaccinated or not should be given to their choice. Yan lang naman ang pinag-uusapan doon eh. No? Mm. Tapos itong mga nasa pamahalaan na kung mag-react sila, uh, pati yun pipigilin nila. Hindi naman tayo nagpapabagsak ng gobyerno. Wala naman tayo minumurang tao. No? Uh, bakit ganyan? This is, this is the... Uh, sad part about this present situation. That's why they are pushing the people, continuously pushing the people to a revolutionary situation. No? Namamatay na nga sa gutom eh. No? Gaganyan yan mo pa, hindi na sila makapagsalita. No? Ay, ito, sila mismo ang tumutulak sa tao na magkaroon ng ano, magsika. Yun lang gusto ko idagdag uh, ngayon. Ben. At ang pinagtataka ko, yung mga kongresista natin at mga senador, bakit naging piti? Ganun nito mga kabiniti natin. So, ano ba? Hindi ba nila naramdaman niya na ang naramdaman ng taong bayan? Kung minsan, nakapag-isip ka na ano ba ito? Talagang conspiracy ba talaga ang nangyari? O... Uh, salita lang na konspirasi ang napakinggan natin. Ay dapat well, marinig din natin ang boses nila. Dapat. Hindi, kasi nga yung sinasabi ko kanina, lahat ng mga senador o halos lahat at mga kongresista, wala na. Hindi naman representante ng taong bayan yan eh. Representante <laughs> lang sila ng kanilang sarili. Na smart matik. <laughs> Na smartmatic lang naman yung mga yan eh. They're not the real representatives. Eh. No? And uh, ang, ang oligarko ang nag-uutos sa kanila kung kailan sila titindig at sila uupo. No? Ganyan yan eh. No? That's why we cannot expect anything from this leadership. Look, if you cannot expect anything from the president right now, who is, who is supposed to be unquestionably elected by the people, no? if you cannot expect anything from them, lalo nang you cannot expect anything from these senators and congressmen who in all probability just cheated their way into office. Kaya komisan na Nakapag-isip-isip ka na ano ba ang pag-intindi ng mga tao na ito? Mga may pinag-aralan naman. When it comes to sovereignty, ano ba ang pag-intindi nila? When it comes to constitutional mandate, constitutionality, ano ba ang pag-intindi nila? Kaya para pariho tayo nakapag-aral. Although ako dalawang taon lang ako sa kuliyo, pero uh, sila sampung taon o walong taon pero bakit na hindi nila naintindihan ang uh, damdamin ng mga mamaya so uh, Chalice, the more educated the more brainwash <laughs> sino pa ang uh, may gusto ipahiwatig ang kanyang damdamin 
Kasi may 20 minutes pa tayo natira. Ah, uh, Mel. Mel, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, dahil uh, uh, mukhang wala naman na uh, wala nang uh, gusto magsalita, uh, tingnan natin kung makahabol tayo sa kanila doon sa baklaran. At uh, ano palagay mo? Uh, we have to uh, end the session uh, early as 12 o'clock or ano tingin mo? Dahil uh, uh, sina Kong Willy, sina Tony Pesadas, ay si Engineer Perdigon pala kanina may sinasabi. Engineer? Tapos na yung record. Go ahead, Engineer. Uh, tapusin ko lang. Uh, natap na, natigil ko dun sa pangangailangan ng grassroots organization. At ang basehan po ng organization na maganda ay yung mga kausa at mga issues na malapit sa kanila. At tulad po niyan, yung uh, mandatory vaccination, maganda po man yan, basis for organizing. Dito naman sa amin, ang issue po ng kuryente. Meron kaming organization dito, yung Aleco Multisectoral Stakeholders Organization. And uh, pwede kong imbitahan yung aking mga kasama doon. Ah, uh, Engineer Perdigon. Uh, Engineer Perdigon, si Kabot uh, na diyan, si Professor Bots Valdez, uh, paki-relay mo sa kanya ang mga problema mo doon sa programa nila sa KDP, Katipunan Sige ng po. Demokratikong Pilipino. Sige po. Ah, nakita ko yung ano niya, yung picture uh, kanina, Mayon Volcano. Uh, dito uh, ako nakatira uh, mismo. Okay. Mayon Volcano kay ano yon, kay Geoffrey yon. Ah, okay. Opo, okay. okay. sige. Si Professor Bot, dito ngayon, Bot Valdez. Yung ah, okay. Sige, sorry. Oh, sige po. So, yun lang naman. And uh, dagdag ko lang. Yan, Siguro may pagkakataon. Na Apo, may pagkakataon na may present ko din dito yung aking uh, panukala na ang disenyo po ng gobyerno ay nakabatay sa pangangailangan ng basic needs ng mga tao. No. Hindi po yung mga indirect measures. Kundi yung food, clothing, shelter, etc. Doon dapat i-disenyo ang struktura ng gobyerno. Uh, I will present a paper on that in future meetings kung pwedeng uh, bigyan ako ng pagkakataon. Yun lang po. Noted in that. Okay sir, so, every uh, Sabado naman ito ng ang plenary. So kung may, may time kayo can attend the plenary every Saturday morning hanggang 12.00. So we can uh, you can present your concern and of course yun, yung ano yung mga ma share naman ng ating mga shadow representative as uh, na may support sa inyong problema dito sa atin sa ating kapaligiran. Okay. Ah uh, si Domingo Solyuso Jane at Gabe Babe Abanto, kung mayroon pa kayong uh, ipahiwatig, now the floor is yours. Sa akin po, wala na po. Okay na po. Okay, so si Babe, okay na. Okay. Si Domingo Solyoso, may we hear from you? Or Uh, Kong Villarama, any parting words? Uh, Attorney Posadas. Binabati ko po itong ating uh, virtual uh, congress at uh, marami din akong nakakukuhang uh, mga bagong mga bagay-bagay na kailangan pag-isipan. Maaaring kanya-kanya uh, uh, tayong linya pero mapagsasama-sama din natin lahat yan. Sa tulong ng ating Panginoon. Talagang ganyan, may kanya-kanya tayong mga ika nga, mga hilig, no? Kamukha ako, ang aking talagang passion eh, yung how to educate our voters, no? 
how to educate our voters dahil uh, alam niyo ang uh, botante natin 60 million ang uh, total na mga kandidatong nasyonal 70 pero pag sinama mo yung lahat ng kandidato hanggang konsehal sa buong Pilipinas 45 mil so so paano tuturuan yung 60 million na botante sa buong Pilipinas kung paano boboto yung 45 mil na kandidato <laughs> sempre ihahati mo yan according to district di ba Mm. Uh, kasi sa mga lokal ang importante doon yung bakbakan sa mayor eh si Hal no uh, congressman y- yung national medyo kursukursunado na lang eh. eh yung mga yung mga kandidatong national yun ang mahalaga yan ang gumagawa ng batas sa Senado yan ang mga mga ano mga leader no so it's a big challenge talaga Pag uh, kinuha niyo yung uh, totality ng kandidato, 45 mil hanggang konsehal buong Pilipinas, at saka si 60 million voters. <laughs> Kaya uh, yun ang nakakasakit ako. No? Although kumuha na ako ng computation sa bawat distrito, uh, kasi by district naman ng, ng eleksyon, di ba? Mm. Ay na governor, mga board member, uh, congressman. Panay district base yan eh. Pag uh, kinumpute mo sa district base, hindi masyado ang kandidato. Hindi ganun karami ang kandidato sa bawat distrito. Bawat distrito siguro, kinumpute ko na eh. Hanapin ko lang yung computer ko. Mga apat na po lang ang kandidato per district. So, apat na po lamang ang pag-aaralan ng mga ano, ng mga botante. Well, at saka yung ano yung pitong pong uh, national candidates no so yun lang po ang aking uh, passion talaga dahil kanya-kanya tayo kung hindi natin may uh, mapapakita sa mga botante yung uh, mahuhubaran natin yung mga kandidato eh paano nila malalaman kung sino magaling di ba dapat makita nila pati mga pekla tigawat ng lahat ng kandidato para ma-appreciate nila Kung uh, sino karapat dapat. Ayun lang po. Salamat po marami. Okay, salamat. Kaya ako, hindi ako politiko, hindi rin ako abogado. Chief Marine Engineer ako ng barko. Pero nakapag-post ako sa Facebook na dapat ang national doon lang mag-eleksyon. Yung presidente lang at saka vice president. Then ang iba, lahat na yan ng mga local official at saka ibang national leaders appointment na lang. I-appoint na lang sila ng presidente. Then, mm. kung magkamali man, automatic pwede mo tanggalin. Unlike ng elected, sampung taon lang, hindi mo pa matigil-tigil mo mapaalis. Alam mo kung bakit? Elected daw sila ng taong bayan. A dynasty. Hmm. Tama, pero kung, tama kayo. Pero kung appointed siya, kung appointed siya, pag nagkamali ngayong araw, bukas pwede mo tanggalin. Hindi siya makareklamo. Tama. Kaya lang, ang dami natin batas eh. Civil service do, ang daming mga... Yan nga ang problema. Yan nga ang problema. Uh, Ngayon, inaplano pa nila na bago ka mag-anidato, kailangan na uh, uh, college uh, graduate ka. Nung araw, nung mga ninuno natin, back to 1899 Constitution, hindi man nakatapak ng kolheyo ang mga leaders natin, like uh, Andres, Bonip- ay, Andres Bonipasio, pero maganda ang uh, pamalakad nila. Na, 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 na unite nila ang uh, mamamayan sa buong bansa. Ngayon, ni Mayor nga, ni, 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 hirap na nga mag-unite kung isa na nga mga constituent niya sa bayan niya. Kaya malaki problema. Eh, mga mga Pilipino talaga yung mga, ano, eh, mga ating bayani. Eh. Kaya kailangan buhayin natin ang pag-aaral sa mga buhay ng mga bayani. Then, yun na kilala ng mga Ng mga bata eh. So si Rizal, alam lang nila yung may mamang nakatayo sa mga luneta. Hindi <laughs> nila alam kung ano kabayarihan yung si Rizal. Eh, ganun din sa mga ibang matatapang natin mga leader. Nakakalukot po talaga. Kaya talagang kailangan buhay natin yung nakaraan. Okay, ganun. So Mr. Okay. Speaker, I'd like to be recognized. Yes, you are recognized. Uh,
Okay, as a kind of a summary uh, from uh, Governor Villarama and uh, Butch Valdez and, uh, and uh, Senator Lina, former Senator Lina. Now, let's put it in an analogy. So what we are all discussing uh, uh, notwithstanding whatever we're discussing, we are uh, now into doubling into all the effects in the causes, you know. So what I, I'd like to do is to put it in an analogy. Everything that uh, Governor Villarama and Speaker, I mean, uh, Butch Valdez and uh, ex-Senator Lina are saying are all uh, on the level of effects. So how do we, uh, how do we get out of the effects or out of the box of? We're like in a box, uh, doubling and swimming in getting confused in all the effects. What we need to do is to get out of the box, and agree on solidifying on a cart, yung isang box, na maitutulak natin. So what we're doing also, in effect, right now, we are trying to organize the horses. <clears throat> uh, we're trying to organize the horses, hoping that the horses, uh, even is organized, will push the cart. But we don't have a cart yet. We don't have a solid form of a cart yet. And we don't even have, to we don't even have an identity of what the cart is all about. And the cart must be structured, ready, and running, orderly and peaceful, that can be pushed. So, even if we organize all the uh, horses now, so to speak, or the people, or the grassroots level, by educating and so forth and so on, we're still getting the horses ahead of the cart. Okay, even if we go organize the cart and and the horses are ready to pull the cart, there's nothing solid that it can, uh, uh, I mean... Uh, can be fully pulled. Yeah, can be pulled, yes, correct. And even and even if you want it to, to be pushed in a revolutionary government, there's really nothing to push. There's nothing solid. There's nothing identifiable. Now, the reason why I'm trying to do this is if, if we start, with anything at all other than a peaceful and orderly way, invoking the the out of office of the president, we can be mistaken for insurgents. All right. Because what we're trying to do is to incite people to what? To rebel. We with with no cause, with no legal cause. They because anything, us. any cause that will try to re change the regime or the present president will be considered, at the very least, an inciting to sedition. So you're trying to change the regime or the government without a cause. Now, what we need is a cart, the cause that is solid and ready and solidified. And even if we turn to the past, so be it. That is the one that is already ready and ready to be pushed and to be pulled. Oh, Now, while we... Once we agree on the cart and solidify it into a really something solid, it's a ramming point that will create a traction, a traction that is legal and constitutional. And nobody, not even international intervention, can, can fault us for trying everything under the sun, legal and constitutional and people's will and so forth and so on in an orderly and peaceful way. Okay, once we push it to that point, and still the president does not order any referendum or plebiscite, then so be it. We tried everything. We have exhausted all the legal and constitutional peaceful means to be recognized at least for an orderly shifting into a parliamentary federal form of government, which is a complete change from the 1987 constitution. 
Because if you're going to change into another constitution, it's in the same form, nothing will be changed. Because it, it, the, in, the entrenched uh, corruption lies within the system. If you don't change the system, contamination remains, especially habitually and culturally. Uh, it's become a habit among the people. Uh, that's what creates all this oligarchy, monopoly, and and uh, you know everything else. That's uh, uh, various uh, various uh, subtle shapes and forms of oppression and suppression, uh, including. One example is what's happening in the so-called pandemic now. Oh, we don't have a solid box or a solid cart to push or to be pulled. We've been talking like horses and chicken. We're all like a chicken uh, just uh, going around in circles. But we have to agree on a cart that is ready, solid, constitutional, and legal. And nobody can fault us, even, uh, even, uh, even, even any dictatorial government uh, form of uh, in in the world cannot fault us for trying everything we can under our system to change the government. No, not change the government, but to change the form of government. Can can you see it? Because if we start, other than uh, trying to push the cart or the uh, legal and constitutional cause of the 1899 constitution, we can be accused of treason and uh, inciting to sedition. Uh, attorney. And we will be stopped right away. At, attorney, I have yes. one I have uh, important question. Like, for example, uh, posing the 1899 constitution, because that is also the constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. Can it be considered subversion? No, it's not. It's not a subversion because you're invoking the 1987 Constitution presidential oath of office to redress people's grievances. Oh, what is? Uh, we're not trying to change the regime. We're trying trying to change the form of government. We're not trying to change the president into another president. We're not so, trying to change the government so, into a military rule. Other than that, can it be considered unconstitution unconstitutional because that is the mother constitution we had in the Republic of the Philippines? No, 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 no. We're invoking the 1987 Constitution. In the 1987 Constitution, President Duterte uh, swears under his oath of office to redress people's grievances, and the people's grievances in a form that is constitutional and legal through a plebiscite petition. Oh. <laughs> no, what, what I mean, what I mean is, kagaya nito, uh, ginapilit natin na i-adapt natin ang uh, 1899 Constitution. Ngayon, pag nag uh, ipon-ipon tayo, bawal. So, can that be defined as unconstitutional dahil ang ginabasihan natin ay 1899 Constitution? Kung sabihin nila na unconstitutional, tama ba sila o mali? Well, under their under their perception that uh, anything that's uh, going to form a rally or to uh, uh, to incite uh, whatever needs to be changed can be under uh, local or police uh, rules uh, to once you get organized it without a permit may be considered uh, illegal. So that's what they're banking on. But it's a different story. Ours is not uh, inciting to sedition. What we want to do is for President Duterte to follow his oath of office once, it's, uh, once a referendum is approved for him to order a referendum to ask the people whether they like to change the form of government. And that's the people's will, and that's the people's grievance. How can you how can you be illegal and unconstitutional and inciting to treason when you're invoking the present 1987 constitution for the president to listen to the people? <laughs> it cannot be. Yeah. Are you kidding? Then if he doesn't like to do that, then let the military uh, take over. But at least there is a basis 
for them to say, hey, Mr. President, you're not following your oath of office. Uh, we're going to follow now the people's will that they want to change into another form or system of government. Oh. Okay. And uh, then in, I may... in the box, in the box, yeah. now we will include in the box the process for educating the people in different dialects. That's all along with the process uh, within the box. But we have to agree of what will be in the box. Yung sinasabi ni uh, Professor uh, Valdez, na the, people, the oligarch are, are so entrenched that they will fight to the death. Okay, we will have that process in the box. And in one fell swoop, once the 1899 Constitution, everything changes. So therefore, automatically, all the public utilities will be taken over. Hmm. Because it okay. will be under a uh, transition prime minister and everything will be retrofit into all the local uh, municipal and uh, regional uh, uh, provincial uh, statutes or codes. So that's the most orderly okay. and peaceful way of pushing a cart. Now, we are ahead of the cart because we are now trying to organize and identify the horses. Including in the box will be identification of the enemy, education of the people, and so forth and so on. But we have to start with something solid that can be pushed or pulled legally and constitutionally. They cannot accuse us or nipping us in the bud for inciting to sedition. That's what I'm afraid of. Anything else outside of what we're doing can be considered inciting to sedition. And we can be arrested for this. Uh, okay. If I may, if I may. Okay, yeah. uh, one to two minutes because we are already yeah, yeah. beyond 12. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, if, if I may, uh, discussions like this, even we're tackling, let's say, the a revival of the old constitution, 19, 1899, uh, this is covered under free speech, free press, uh, right. etc. So we can even, in fact, the anti subversion law has been repealed, di ba? In time near yeah. Ramos. Uh, so you can even espouse, talk about communism, about like in schools, so for long as you don't bear arms. That's Correct. Uh, so it's Correct. ideas, just ideas, in the free market of ideas. You can think, that, you can think of will, anything in your mind. And you that discuss. will be in the card. That will be yeah. in the card or the box yeah. that we're trying so, to solidify. Yeah. So it makes horse sense whether you're ahead of the cart or yeah. behind the cart, whether you pull or I'm just uh, playing with the horse right. sense. Pull. Uh, but so. uh, uh, <laughs> it's good to discourse about, you know, but whether it's practical or not, it's another story. No? Uh, and, there's, I, and there's no perfect condition or situation in order to push the cart. Yeah can start any time but it must have a solid and, and, and maybe if I may add while it is a that idea to bring back that thing no, that old uh, 1899 but you need something that is as a probably a middle or uh, entry point uh, issue I don't know whatever it is because People would and legalists and the no would raise the issue. Uh, would would that 1899 have been uh, would suffer from lapsability uh, once even if it's not explicitly repealed? Uh, normally, uh, there is a, a, a provision in jurisprudence if it's not repealed, explicit repeal, any succeeding law presumes it is redeemed, something like that. Even a Republic Act not signed by the President under our constitutional uh, constitution, within 30 days it's not signed by the President, it's automatically deemed approved. Uh, does this apply to the 1899? The lapsability, deemed approved, and so you might just things like that. So, but it's a good uh, uh, topic for discourse to get a rouse up people. No? I mean, just to because we need the we need to elevate the people to a higher level of 
higher and yet deeper level of discussion. So to for them to appreciate the dynamics, the dialectics, the pros and cons of issues. Because our people for many decades have been dumbed down into watching Vice Ganda TV shows and you know, <laughs> etc. Na, uh, nagiging and social media na uh, to point that they, they, they've lost the capacity to think beyond themselves. Uh, and yung vanity, selfie-selfie, likes-likes, etc. But nawala na yung thinking for the common good, for the general welfare, for the national, and, uh, okay, or correct. The global, and something like that. So, okay, now, as a summary, ano, a good, Mr. Ano. Speaker. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Mr. Speaker, yeah, that's yes. a good, those right. are good, very, very good points. But notwithstanding the fact that the uh, still uh, the, it's not let's put it this way the uh, the 19 the 1899 constitution is still alive and valid that can be supported legally and constitutionally but let's use an analogy the Const 1899 constitution is a creation of the people's will and it's only the creator that can change its own constitution and there's never been any manifestation that it's been repealed or abolished or abrogated by the people's will. In all the subsequent constitution that that uh, supposedly came from the pure people's will, there's no provision in itself that repealed or abolished the 1899 constitution. And it can also be likened to a corporation. Once formed, it has an indefinite life and validity. Unless the corporate the, the incorporators themselves put a condition for uh, for abolishing it or dissolving it. So it continues on. It has an indefinite term as long as it's a manifestation of the pure people's will that lives on unless it is abolished or abrogated. But notwithstanding that, even, even if they say, oh, the 1899 constitution is already dead and we're going to the past, but nevertheless, if it's the people's will now in a referendum to approve that they want to change into the 1899 constitution, whether it's valid or not, it's the people's will now. And President Duterte has to listen to it yeah. once it's been approved. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. So in the end, it's the people's voice. Because there's a people's Correct. initiative. So yeah. the, the way there is the people's initiative. Uh, but before you get there, let's widen, deepen, and wholesale the discussion. Because that way, you just trigger their minds first. Uh, yeah. Because when you discuss actual action agad, na ano na matao, I mean, you're bordering on something. I mean, uh, they, they jump on, on you know, Ano, na, na una yung fee, na una yung, ano, are we violating anything or what? Oo. Kasama lahat. Effect, yeah, 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 yeah. Kasama lahat yan dun sa card, sa box. Nandun ang introductory, nandun ang educational oh, introduction, tama, tama. nandun ang papaliwanag. Oh. Oh. Pa, nandun so, lahat sa box. Okay. Kasama natin sa box, but we should also think out of the box. Just yes. Pwede po ba what we need to do now. We're taking out of the box to create yeah. the present box. Yeah. Oh. Si, si oh, Kong Bilarama, may logis yun. Apo, uh, uh, can, I, uh, can I put something in the box? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, we're, now we're on to uh, getting the box organized, see? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kasi, kasi ganito po eh. Yung Cori Constitution po, uh, actually, ang panalo dapat doon ay yung parliamentary form. Uh, ba bakit ko alam? Kasi si Ka Blas Opler, uh, siya ang, ano eh, siya ang, uh, ang uh, inappoint ni Tita Cory, kumuha ng limang oposisyon. Okay. Ngayon, nung magbobotohan na, yung kanyang best friend si Assemblyman Calderon, Assemblyman Calderon ng Neva Biscaya, sumakit ng chan, pumunta sa banyo. Hindi na nakabalik. So, natawa lamang ng one, one vote yung uh, 
yung uh, parliamentary. So, ang ang uh, pangarap ko sana kung makakuha tayo ng kopya nung uh, nung deal, no, na pinagbobotohan. That would be a very I would say uh, may uh, 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 parang accurate feeling nung limang buong delegado. So alam natin kung ano ba yung parliamentary na pinagbotohan. Kasi kung kung hindi lang nagbanyo si Calderon, panalo ang parliamentary. Tapos sa lahat ng problema natin eh. Oo. Oh. Kasi uh, kaya uh, yun, magandang pag-aralan. Tapos yeah. <laughs> anong pwedeng gawin ng isang bagong presidente? Pwede siyang mag-constitute ng ano? Nang uh, ano tawag to, yung uh, Senate at Congress, pwedeng i-constitute yan into a uh, into parang uh, parang uh, I don't know the right term, no? pero parang constitutional convention to draft uh, uh, to study to, to study to, to draft a uh, uh, new ano, pero subject siyempre sa debate at saka referendum, di ba? Yeah, yun ma- yun ang mga choices na ilalagay natin sa box. Ayun. Oo. Oh. Oh, ay. Kung may, may ano ko, may tanong la ako. Na nabanggit mo ba to kay Tot ang tungkol diyan sa parliamentary votes na yan na uh, sa limang ano? Hindi, hindi nag-usap na kami. Ang problema, hindi na kasi may kopya si Bot. Si Tot. Hindi, 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 hindi nga hindi, hindi nga niya makita kasi nasa bodega na yung kami may complete set kami. Ang problema nasa ah. bodega. So ang uh, hinahanap ko sana yung mga members ng uh, Kon-kon, like si, kung may naka, kung kailangan kasi close tayo eh. Kamukha halimbawa si Monson, no? Uh, baka may kopya siya. Kasi ano lang naman yun, hindi naman ganun kakapal eh. It, it's like a, 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 a constitution, <coughs> pero parliamentary in form. Uh, yun ang maganda sana ng pag-aralan kasi kahit itong kon-kon-as na, na ano, nila puno, nila justice puno, ayaw ko kung, kung, uh, if they tried to ano to to read that eh, kasi yung kanilang federalism talagang masalimuot eh theoretically maganda pero madugo no yeah madugo so ayun ang pwede nating pag-aralan dahil yan naman ma-implement lang natin yan pag uh, tumama sa presidente na talagang ano tapos may nakahanda na tayong uh, uh, parliamentary ano uh, para batas no no pa- pwede na natin pag uh, Pwede natin pagawain niya ng isang isang taon bago mo po yung bagong halal na congressman at senador. Kasi Ayan. yan lang po ang ano eh, ilang po ang, Ay- lang po panggamot sa mga dynasty. It's not a perfect one, no? pero magiging ano na, party system na. O, Kaya ang akin suggestion dyan, ang, uh, na sabi nila tiwali ako, uh, sabi ng RDRG tiwali ako. Kasi sabi ko, habang nag-uusap ni Bishop Nero Tayag, uh, nagsasalita, pinarinig ko kay uh, Professor Hill para maintindihan niya kasi yan ang napag-usapan namin. So what I mean is, first we have to adapt the 1889 Constitution. So para hindi tayo ma hindi tayo mawalaan ng Constitution for the time being. At mm-hmm. habang na ina-adapt natin, kung ano man ang kagustuhan nila, indagdagan na lang natin. At kung ano ayaw nila, mawasa natin. Pero walang political crisis. Mm-hmm. Oh, Pero, sige. nahirap unawain ang sinasabi ko daw. Sa so next okay. session. Okay, dahil okay. to 12.15 okay. na, let's suspend the, 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 the session. Uh, last message, last message, uh, Mr. Okay. Speaker. Okay, the next ahead. session, I will compose a, res- a uh, resolution that uh, from he- there on, everything that we will be discussed, that everything that we will be discussing will be put in the box. Okay. okay? That will be relevant for the box to be structured so that we can push it or pull it. Okay. okay. So we're now discussing the cart that we are making before the before we can uh, get the horses to pull it. Okay. At saka yung resolusyon na uh, napag-usap na natin na uh, yung sa barangay level manggaling, uh, ano, uh, napag-usapan nyo na ito ni Magdamo kasi absent ka nung uh, nakaraan. Yeah, eh, ibig sabihin, na, nasa resolution na lahat, uh, everything na we will be discussing now, even privileges yeah. speeches, will be a suggestion that will go into the box for okay, action. Okay. Noted. Sig- for siguro, action. it's possible we can have copies of Mel Magdamos, ano, 
PowerPoint presentation, yun yung the details. I mean, ako for just appreciation lang for the the, the ideas, the arguments. Uh, Na- worth worth exploring. We will uh, include that in the box. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. And then, ano, everything, uh, everything will solidify towards the box. Now, everything uh, that we will invite will contribute to the box. Okay. So that once okay, it's box. identified, what they want will put in the box. If it's, uh, if it's uh, mutually inclusive within our uh, main aim to change the form of government and invoking the constitutional order of office of the president. Oh, what more can you ask for? Okay, Bilarama. Uh, uh, kawili, oh. kawili. Hindi, ha- habang pinupuno natin yung kahon, dapat uh, iba sa atin, maghahanap na ng mga kabayo. Yes. Nagigila oh. dyan. Makes, <laughs> makes more sense. Mga botante. Oh. Oh, <laughs> botante <laughs> dahil may <laughs> <laughs> kung lima lang kabayo hindi uh, hindi sabihin yeah, tong atin kan is of the essence time is of the essence but yeah. we will we will be organizing the horses you know keep pag-usap tayo uh, kung i-train natin yung mga kabayo but yung kabayo alam nang gagawin yung oh. Maharlika group mukhang malaking grupo na yan uh, malaking bagay yan oh. Oh. kasi uh, yeah, is, uh, uh, yung consciousness natin parang ano yan eh parang circle yan eh pag mutually inclusive oh okay anyway next session okay, so sige. i uh, okay for the session so, to be ended for that time being we have to suspend the uh, session bye. and uh, see you next saturday thank you thank Turn. you salamat po thank you thank you, thank you. Okay. we'll see you within yeah. the box okay okay, okay bye <laughs> thank you